found out that the Manchun version that you killed was nothing more than a simulacrum, a watered-down copy of the real Manchun. And so carefully, stealthily, and sneakily, you made your way to Manchun's bedroom, finding him sleeping, basically ganged up on him, tied him up, hogtied him, um, gagged him, so he could not cast verbal, somatic, or material component-based spells upon you. You successfully took a robe and a staff from him, raided uh, his his study, finding a large spell book, a beautiful, magnificent, magnificent set of armor along with a magic sword upon defeating said set of armor that was guarding the spell book, uh, along with some papers and some other things. You made your way from Kolot Towers after leaving the interdimensional sanctum back to Prestige Worldwide, and that is where you find yourselves now. If there's anything you guys want to cover, add to that, feel free. I'll give you a moment. If we if we have that secret um, you know, place to store things, Alistair would be putting the, uh, yeah. stone, of, the stone of Galore there. So Harry did the uh, the magical lock thing on it, and uh, so it's locked due to a password, and the password is boats and hose. Perfect. Gotcha. And so, Alistair, it is... I actually just changed the map. I don't know if you guys can see that yet. The the area where you store things is actually back here in this, like, back room. Okay. Um, Not on this map, because it's not my map, so I was not able to add this officially, but there is a pathway here. Back here. And I sort of just drew it. Let me see if I can change the like color. Here somewhere? Nice. Yeah, exactly. Um, to the sewers. So you guys do have a pathway to the sewers at this point in time as well back there. Perfect. Is there a door to the said thing? Uh, yeah, I believe you guys did put up a door. Like and a locked that, door in particular. Is that also the arcane lock that I... Same thing. Uh, there are there could be two arcane locks if you so wished. There could be one... Yeah, yeah, Harry. For a door, and then one for yeah, Harry would have put one on each. Yeah. Okay. Same, same password though, for either one. Cool. Then I will bring us back upstairs. Um, is there anything else to go over? If not, we can jump in. Oh. Um, no, let's do it. That's, that was the most important thing. Fair enough. Um. So it is morning. You have just returned from your endeavors, which encompassed roughly, I believe, 18 to 20 hours or so. I believe that there were two long rests in there at different times. Um, you are beaten down, tired. You, you know, you didn't necessarily get the best rest in the middle of these areas. Um, and you find yourselves walking home, and Grub Grub comes forward with a letter. And I will toss something down for Grub Grub. He has a letter, and it is addressed to both Zeusanu and Aerith. Next to the letter is a pouch. This pouch, uh, I would say that it's roughly the size of a human's fist, um, and it clinks and, mo and makes noise as Grub Grub lifts it up from behind the bar onto the counter and says, Zeusanu, for you, and Aerith. And there's, like, a sealed letter. Has not been broken. Ooh, my, uh, my eyes twinkle, and I go and I open the letter and read it aloud to the boys. Okay. Um, the letter describes how uh, your family is so sad to hear that you find yourself in destitute times and how they're very willing to provide for you at this time, um, indicating that there's money in the pouch. Um, it also says that Aerith is required back home in the Birdfolk Kingdom. Uh, they seek his expertise on a number of matters, particularly around a change in the cycle of the moons. Uh, at this, Aerith knows that it's his time to part ways with the group and begins to say his friendly goodbyes, pack his things, and move along. Um, if there's anything any of you would like to say to Aerith, you may do so. Otherwise, you can count your coins, Zeusanu. Godspeed, Aerith. 
or moon people speed. <laughs> yeah, give my cousin a hug and then go start counting my gold. Uh, there's 500 gold coins in this purse. Beyond that, there are three rubies and one diamond. Nice. So you have been bequeathed a small fortune. I uh, jingle the uh, the purse in my hand in front of everyone. Be like, "Well, boys, a little more, uh, a little more gold for our shopping trip. Next time we go out, drinks are on me." Alistair gives you a nod and says, "A little bit extra couldn't hurt." What would you guys like to do? Uh, is this the yeah. same day where we got back? Same morning. It's, oh, it's the morning. Um, hmm. Uh, Harry would just want to go to bed. Ooh, yeah. I, uh, I am over <laughs> Take my carrying round. capacity with all that gold. Uh, Harry would put on his new robes and go to bed and try to attune to him. Don't we have a, uh, a lockbox somewhere? Y you do, down in the basement, and... I believe in your character sheet you can account for that so that it shouldn't eat up your carrying capacity. Yeah, there's a you can check on or off if you want to keep track of gold weight. Yeah. There we go. So I have, let's do the math here. I have like 80 pounds of gold. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yes. you should be putting things in your bag of holding as well. Uh, I had all my books in there. Oh, that's right. Okay. Now that now that we're back home, we should just sort of like inventory our stuff and just like rest. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And then, and then go from there. <laughs> Because like we we've been gone for a ton of time. Well, yeah, Grub Grub can keep in D and D on, a ton of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Wolf's not sleepy. He wants to take a long rest. <laughs> yeah, if you guys want, you are more than welcome to go ahead and take long rests at oh, this point. We clicking that button. Say no more, friends. Uh, so our wakes up re-energized. I want to stash my arrows here, or offer them to anybody in the group who may want to carry them instead. Are they bolts or arrows? Oh, you got you have a short bow, right? Yeah, they're arrows. Yeah, I mean, I can hold them. Uh, when we, yeah, when we do shopping, I'm gonna buy a chest so I can just dump my extra stuff in there. It's twenty um, arrows, and they're a pound each. It says a pound. Or each arrow is a pound. Maybe not. Maybe it's probably like a like group of 20 is yeah. a pound. 20 <laughs> arrows are a pound, I believe. Okay, I thought it was 20 pounds. Right. Damn. Those are some then. lead headed arrows. <laughs> well, yeah, I don't think I need my, my bow anymore. So if anybody wants these arrows, they're all you. I mean, I can hold on to them. Yeah. Boom, 20 arrows, yours. <laughs> Cool. Do you uh do you use bolts, Victor? Do you have a crossbow? I have a longbow. Ah. Yep. Yeah, so the diamond and the two rubies are worth five thousand gold apiece. Well, they're also components for spells. So. Yeah. Yeah. The diamonds for revivify, right? Yeah, revivify. but I don't think any of us get that, unless Harry does. Well, hey, Roth would have had it. Yeah, I think you guys are a little short on the healing in particular. But having the material components can help pay for the cost of things. And this is something most adventurers would know, I would say, within Waterdeep. Um, if one of you were to die and you were able to bring the body to a nearby temple, because you have the material components, the cost would be significantly less to have the body revivified for you. Nice. 
Uh, yeah. What is um? You wrote Harold now has wish. Is that a spell or is that a like thing? That is a spell. That's a okay. spell. Okay. So that that was in the list of spells in the right. spell book well, that's in what particular. So why did you write that in? You know what I'm saying? It's specifically, just, I was it's just, just the best spell in the game. That's all. Oh okay. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. What wishes? I'll have I to know. Look into it. <laughs> Yeah, so Wish can literally do every other thing that any oh, other that's spell right. can do. Right, right, right. I think we but, so can, can Harry cast like the higher level spells, even if he's not that level yet? Uh, he cannot cast those higher level spells um, until he attains the actual level to do it. But when he does, he'll have them known in his spell book. So like, in reality, what this does for Harry is he will have like double or triple the number of spells that he would probably normally have access to when he gains a new spell level. Yeah. He's just he's just got a whole fuck, fucking massive list ready to go. Yeah, so that's why, well, I was trying to figure out which ones. Um, I gotta add that like two or sweet. three of them right so now. I have and a spell book. I don't know if this helps anybody. With Burning Hands, Disguise Self, and Shield. Shield, shield kind of helps me. I already have shield, but I can't. How does that work for me? Same as it would work for Harry. So I can learn shield. So, yeah, totally. Yeah. It's a reaction, and you get what plus two AC. Yeah, I think or it's a level re-roll. one. No, it's, it's a, a re-roll. It's a level one. So yeah, shield, shield is plus five oh, AC plus five, as a reaction. Yeah, yeah. So do I need to do anything from the book? I'm like double checking. So the real question is like, as a rogue, yeah, so like when, when Harry learns a spell, spells. he copies it into his spell book. Yeah, I don't know how that works for a rogue. Exactly. Right, because rogues don't you use you pull power from your item or something? It's not from a oh. spell book. Well, he's an arcane you just, trickster. You just you just know spells, so I think you just it's, know it once you know it. It's different because like uh, I'm also elf too, which are like innately magical some way right i'm just saying i think i was under the impression wizards were very unique in with the spell book thing so yeah like everyone else knows though. spells where wizards have like a spell book it's just different from everyone else i thought i thought so they specifically treat the arcane trickster as like a wizardy type rogue it like yeah. it uses intelligence it uses the wizard spell list um and so it just doesn't say that you have a spell book. Yeah. So I want to say you learn it, you memorize it, and then you always know it. And I okay. think you can un like you can't because I can't I can't add it because I have a certain number of spells I can learn because like this is already in like the you option. Can, oh, okay. Can you unlearn? Yeah, some that, that's them? what I was wondering. You can replace it. Because like sure, he, you can replace it. Yeah, you can definitely replace it if you wanted to replace it for something else. That's totally fine. So I have to make like a homebrew feat where you just, you know, know it. I'm pretty sure that's like a thing in Xanathar's that's literally like the DM can just say they replace their spells. So I, I was playing it like I couldn't swap my spells. Basically, like when I learned them, that's it. So that's why I wasn't sure like how that would work since I like have, this, have the book. That's how, that, we, that's how we that, played before, but you did get to override something, but you just couldn't. You can generally do it when like, you level up. Yeah, that's what it was. Okay. You kind of just switched your spells. It's like arcane tricksters are very limited with uh, with spells and stuff. Like we don't we don't get much. So I just didn't want to like do anything I shouldn't be. But we'll see. I would yeah I would say like when you level up again, if you want to switch out spells for spells that you have access to be able to learn, okay, that's more than fine. Okay. Um, okay, so um, just for housekeeping, how, what is the cost of and timing of uh, copying spells? Um, that is going to be is it fifty gold in an hour or something like that. It depends on yeah, it depends on the level. Oh, um, it's right. fifty gold a level, I think. Let me double. It's in the uh, the rules for the wizard. Give me a second, and I can find that again. I'm 
might just sell this book. Uh, unless you unless you don't have any of these, like I'll let you borrow it. No, I'm good on those. I have a spell book too with a bunch of spells. This one only has three. Or actually, yeah, one of these, Unseen Servant. I wanted to add that to my book. How many, uh, doesn't Alistair already have a lot of reactions? Um, I mean, kind of. I mean, I do now, now that I have Uncanny Dodge, now that we're level 5. And you got that Barb's one. Yeah, Silvery Barb's. But that costs a spell slot, so I won't be using that one as often. Uncanny Dodge is going to be my, uh, going to eat up a lot of my reactions now. It's a good one. It is. You guys it's, use it's... that all the time, right? I mean, any rogue should be using it all the time. <laughs> Once you hit that level. Send you the details on that, Harry. All right, thanks. I guess, okay, I guess another thing that I'm doing this time is uh, going to summon my familiar just while we're chilling. Oh, yeah, so call. can can Harry attune to these robes? You very much can attune to the robes. All right, Harry's attuned to said robes. And uh, I think I'm going to do two spells, and I'll take care of whatever it costs. To them. Cool. Out of, and it uh, takes the Book of Manchun. So it takes two hours per spell level and 50 gold per spell level. All right, so uh, I'll take the gold out, and then uh, I'll say Harry takes a long rest, and the next morning he uh, copies a couple spells the next okay. morning. Okay. What what spells are you doing? Um, specifically, we're going to go with Counterspell. It's a level three, so six hours, 300 gold. Yeah. Or sorry, uh, 150 gold. Yeah. And... <laughs> Holy oh, I, shit. I, I, I still I, had Harry muted from when <laughs> from yeah, I was just going to say that. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, who are, like, who are you talking to? Yeah, right? <laughs> wait a minute. So you need to be rich, Harry, to learn these spells. It's only 150 gold. It's going to cost him it, at least 450 gold to like copy a ninth level spell into his spell book. That's what I'm saying, though. Like It's oh, going to yeah, add up. Later, uh, though. That, that's <laughs> like, I'm never going to get the ninth level spell. <laughs> I only have level threes. What level can you learn a ninth level spell? Level nine. Yeah, right? <laughs> Who knows? Uh, I'm not... Well, uh, yeah. Maybe I find a magical item that levels me up ten levels. Yeah, I think it's quick. like end game. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, you have to be level seventeen to learn a ninth level spell yeah, as a yeah. wizard. Yeah, just ten more levels to go. It's a little strange. It's um, it's usually the spell level multiplied by two minus one. So like you learn third level spells, or you learn level three spells at level five right um i guess that's the only one right now that i wanted to do so counter spell that's one you can actually use yeah third level baby that's cool and that staff's got some crazy spells right Oh yeah. Yeah, Zeus Anu has the yeah that has so you can spells. use any of the spells in an item yeah. Even if you aren't of that level. So that's yeah. the beauty of like the staff and the wand mm -hmm. and the the robes. So I have Kona Cold, Fireball, and Lightning Bolt all at fifth level. These other ones are good too. Wall of Force. That's huge. Oh, see, I do, I do have haste. Good. I know we were talking we'll about need that. Need it. <laughs> that actually sort of begs the uh, next question that I was going to ask you guys. What do you guys want to do 
outside like we'll go through the mechanics of like i assume you want to sell the books most likely you might yeah. want to sell that spell book that yeah. you have alistair you yeah. guys might want to get rid of certain items or uh, buy a new weapon Fulknar, so on and so forth um we'll do that that's probably going to take an hour i would guess think about what you guys want to do after that alistair is on high alert when he's uh not resting like he's got the bird in constant surveillance of prestige worldwide. <laughs> Harry wants to visit, uh, do now, visiting stuff. Now that we have that key item in in house, you know, Alistair's on high alert. Is there anything I can do with these alchemist supplies that I have 160 yeah. pounds of? You're, you're, <laughs> you're gonna, gonna them sell them. Buying a weapon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Either leave them here or sell them and buy a weapon, bro. Uh, I'll, I'll so stop. yeah, we'll go shopping, and then um, if no one's really contacting us, you're not gonna. Uh, I mean, girl? do you, do you want to do that right now, Volknar? Do you want to sell those alchemy supplies? Uh, sure. Yeah, why not? Let's do it. Okay. Um, just give me a quick investigation check for that. Sorry, what did you say it was? 13. 13. Um, it takes you a, fi a while to find a store that you think you could sell them at. Um, just trying to find... Is it in the player's handbook? Alchemy mm -hmm. supplies? Yeah, I think he's got a thousand gold worth of it. Gotcha. Okay. Go ahead and add a thousand gold and remove the alchemical supplies for it. Um it, it does take you quite a while to find someone to sell them to, and you actually end up trapezing around a significant portion of the city, starting in the North Ward. Um, it's not until you're in the Southern Ward that you are able to find a uh, old human male uh, who has all sort of like herbs and chemicals. Um, and upon walking in, it kind of smacks you in the face. You might have been able to sell these to Fala right down the lane. Nonetheless... This is where you find yourself at this time. You sell it for a thousand gold. Mulkner's happy with it. It's a lot of weight off his shoulders, if you know what I mean. And now he's fucking rich. You probably have more gold than I do now. Yeah, right. I got 1,200 gold. Yeah, I have 1,030. Do you have some gems that are worth, like, thousands? Yeah, once I sell everything, I'll have, like, a lot. If there's, there's anything... anything... Don't sell the diamond. Uh, do we check yeah. on that, uh, that guy, Justin? Justin the Ogre? Justin Trask? Yeah, whoever, yeah, who's at the Grail Hunts, <laughs> just, like, drink. He's the guy that's gonna drink himself to death. That that's Go what Vic, that's what Victor would do. El okay. Elster's Elster's on watch of the house. I'd go to the bookstore. That uh, Dragonborn guy. All right. Um, we're gonna work with the dr well, you're gonna work with um the bookworm first. Um, what are you looking to sell that you have on hand? Uh, well, did I did I like go through them and uh, like do I have a general idea of what they are? Uh, go ahead and give me a check. I want to see if you can parse through like what's worth what. Uh, what should I roll for that? Investigation. Yeah, um, uh, you could do a history check. You could do an investigation check, or you could do a a general intelligence check. Up to you. Investigation's got the best modifier. Oh, shit. Roll the seven. Maybe, uh, Harold could help you. Um, so there's lots of different types of books. You're really having trouble distinguishing between the books that you found in the library in the interdimensional sanctum and the books that you pulled out of everywhere else within Colot Towers. Um, you think you can get get to it a little bit. You suspect that selling these are going to 
just proved time consuming that the act of it alone is probably going to take several days due to the volume of works that you have on hand uh weren't there there were a few that like you called out by name as i was picking them up if i remember uh yes those were more um gosh i, I actually <laughs> I, I actually invented those on the spot um I don't necessarily believe that those were worth anything of great value. Okay, that was just like story flavor. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I would I would bring the lot of them down to the bookworm, and uh, see if I could recruit the dragonborn guy to like, you know, I would pay him, of course, to help me you know go through the collection, sift through, see if there's any anything worth keeping, what's worth selling. Sure. And you want to like sit him down in Prestige Worldwide to do that? Um, or do you want to bring all the books to him? Probably easier to bring all the books to him because I would imagine he'd have to like reference stuff and like look other things up. Sure. Um, so you can bring them down to the bookworm. Uh, his name again is. Sorry, I should have that on hand. His name would be. Where's treasure? Rishal. Um, and as you enter Rishal's shop, the bookworm's treasure, he looks up and he goes, Ah, Zeusanu, Zeusanu, a loyal patron. Uh, what can I do you for? Uh, well, my good friend, I uh, recently came into possession of quite the collection of literature, uh, some of which I think may be you know, pretty pretty rare, pretty valuable, pretty interesting. Uh, I was hoping I could you know hire and recruit you to help me go through them, sift through them, find the uh, find the gems, find which ones are good, see if there's any you think I should keep, see if uh, I should sell some. You would be my preferred buyer, of course. Um, basically, I just... Oh. Need some help getting through all these books. Oh, well, then, um, and he's, like, looking you up and down. He's like, I don't see where you may be hiding quite a large collection, but uh, whenever you would wish to produce them, uh, bring them forth. At, at a minimum, I can at least act as an intermediary to sell them to the correct people and house them here. But, um, yeah, produce them, and we can go through them together. I, I plot my bag of holding down on the table. And I'm like, oh, this is uh, my bag of holding. I've got them all right in here. Okay. And do you start pulling books out or not? Uh, yeah, I'll start pulling books out one by one and uh, you know, looking at him, seeing where he wants me to start putting them. He's like, oh, just uh, put them here on the counter. And you begin laying them down on the counter and you get about 10 books high and you have to go to the next stack. And then you get 10 books high and you go to the next stack. And suddenly you're halfway across the counter and you're still pulling books out. And he's like, do you have many more? And make a perception check really fast. Uh, where's perception? Ten. Uh, you can see at least twice the amount that you've already pulled out within the bag of holding. Um, yeah, uh, there, there's quite a bit more. I've got about 250 pounds altogether. To, as as I like, said, it was quite the collection. I clutches, into. clutches at his heart and he's like, oh. oh dear. And he like runs over to the door and changes it from open to close and he goes... This is um, this is quite the find. You have my full attention. And as you continue to pull the books out, he begins categorizing them and sorting them and ordering them. And he's just doing it on the floor of the shop because you have about 400 books. Like, it's a comical number of books. <laughs> um, so you've got, like, 40 stacks of 10 books each on the floor, and he's organizing them and sorting them. It takes you, it's going to take you two full days. All right. What Rashal is able to tell you is that he will eventually be able to deliver you 5,000 gold, roughly, for all these books. Oh, damn. A number of them are incredibly rare. A number of them have not been seen in up to about 100 years, they believe. It's going to take him time sourcing the appropriate booksellers to do this. He's going to have to go around basically the entire city to do this. I mean, 5, I, I might want to keep 
some of like the super rare ones for myself. Five thousand so gold. Just take the money. <laughs> I mean, I also I have two rubies to sell. I just got five hundred gold. Like a couple trophies might be nice. Thousand. You do you, bro. Are any are any of the books could they potentially be like plot relevant or like have any use other than just like being cool that I have? Please it? just tell them that. Roll and roll a wisdom check. <laughs> 24. Okay. Oh, that was a save. Sorry. That was a save. <laughs> well, it's a six. Take the 16 and add whatever the number should have been. So it would have been 19. Yes. 18. Yeah. Pretty close. So looking through the books, the vast majority of them would be uninteresting to you. But you do see one in particular that is probably interesting in the regards to cooking. Um, it's an old cookbook. You have a, you know, a proclivity to cooking as it is. You might find this one interesting. It would only take off 50 gold points. So it'd be, you know, 4,950 that you would get. Mind you, this total is a 10% cut on Rashal doing the legwork for you. So he's going to take 500 gold. So it would be 5,500. He's going to take 500. You would keep this one book. 4,950 is what you would receive. Yeah, I'll keep the cookbook. Okay. Um, and I also I would have cast uh, detect magic, just to be safe, just to make sure none of the books are magical. Yeah, no, that's fair. Uh, none of them end up glowing, so not a single book has magic imbued into it. All right, I take my cookbook. Uh, I look over at is it Vishal. He said, "Uh, Rishal. Rishal, look over Rishal. Be like, buddy, thanks for all your help. Uh." Anything you see, anything you want to keep, keep for yourself. Oh, uh, oh, I mean, I and he kind of blushes. He's like, "Yes, I will be selling these." And he points to a stack of about twenty-five books in particular. You have a sneaking suspicion he's like taking the rarest ones on some level because he's going to try to sell it to nobles that he thinks he can get a better price from instead of selling it to book dealers. Um, and yet, at the same time, any increase in price that you suspect he might obtain from this is probably not worth the effort for you. Like, if he's taking it off your hands for 10 gold, he might sell it for 12. Um, okay. The other thing to know, the cookbook that you have is is titled The um, Sights, Smells, and Delicacies of Callum Shan. Light smells and delicacies of where? Callum Shan. And I can write that down for you. So you should have that in Discord now. Um, Callum Shan, as you would probably know, uh, is a a uh, strange desert-based country far to the south of the Sword Coast, where you are now. Nice. Um, also, um, does anyone, this spell book I have, does anyone want these spells, or should I sell this? Sell it. Yeah, I'm pretty sure everything... What about uh, sending? I bet Harry would want that. Is that in Manchun's spellbook? You've been talking about that, getting that spell the entire campaign. Which one? Sending. That's the one we can just like. It's the message cantrip, but like infinite range. One I can I can talk to Vajra. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The cell phone. Morty's cell phone. Is Harold yes, muted Manchun or talking? Yes, Manchun does have that one. Yeah. Um, you hear me? Yeah. Mic check, I, mic check. I can't hear Harry. <clears throat> Do you still have him oh, muted? Come on. No. Oh, wait, yeah, no, because you've been talking to him this whole time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can everyone else hear me? I'm going to yeah, hear you. I can hear back you. Really fast. Yeah, just... yeah. All right, test it out again, Harry. Mic check, mic check. Now I can hear you. That's so weird. Right. Very weird. Sorry. Um. Apologies if I missed something there. Besides that, he has sending in Manchun's spell list. 
It looks like the only one it doesn't have is Dimension Door. I don't think Ooh, I saw that one. That's a good one. Well, read it. Tell me what it does. It's like a teleport type spell. It's like a portal. Yeah, you make a portal for yourself, basically. Yeah, well, I got, like, teleport. Is it... You could... Dimension Door might be an uh, earlier level. Yeah, Dimension Door, I believe, is fourth level, whereas Teleportation Circle is fifth. And this would let you move... Um, you can teleport yourself from your current location to any other spot within range, which is 500 feet. So in terms of teleportation spells, Harry, you would know that they generally level up from Misty Step to Dimension Door to Teleportation Circle to Teleport, and that their power increases effectively. Misty Step's like local room level range. Dimension Door is across the football field level range. Teleportation Circle is anywhere, but takes time and money to cast, and then teleport is instantaneous, and you don't have to draw a big circle. All right. That's the one that uh, the Vajra used to come back into the dungeon. Exactly. Uh, okay. Um, no, I'm just going to stick with Misty Step for now. Okay, yeah, I guess I'd see how much the spell book would be worth. Okay, and this was... Um... Uh, which spellbook in particular? The one with I can uh, I can put it in the chat. The list of the spells in it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna say I'm just doing a quick calculation based off of this. Um, if you sell that to Rashal he would be willing to give you 500 gold for that. Uh, can I be, like, rolling persuasions or something to see if I can get these prices higher? Sure. Yeah, that's that's more than fair. Uh, Roll persuasion. 22. He would be willing to go to 550. Okay, okay. He's not going to be able to make much more off of it. Um... Than, than like 600 so you're cutting into his margins but he's willing to do 550 particularly because you've hand delivered him a uh, treasure trove of yeah books. I just made I'm, uh, I'm helping him get rich we're both getting rich together you can, you can say uh, you included Alistair's uh, spell book with uh, this transaction as well oh what's that having it it's, it's just got burning hands disguise self and shield uh, he would give you an extra twenty-five gold for the for that because Burning Hands is duplicated there. Mm -hmm. So five seventy-five total. Oh, so you you can just add that twenty-five to your uh your pouch. Okay. Can I ask a a clarifying question between counterspell and dispel magic? Yes. Um, can you just use counterspell as dispel magic? So I believe the yeah. text. I would have to double check the text of counterspell, but I believe it's a reaction. Yeah. Uh, casting time against another spell being cast. Like in the moment. Exactly. Right. Okay. So you can't use them interchangeably. Right. Okay. One is during, and the other is post. Right. Okay. Okay. And I, should I, I guess I'll sell the rubies too. Go ahead and make a investigation check for that. And after this, we're going to flip over to Victor, who I believe had something you wanted to do. Twelve. Okay. It takes you basically another full day to find a jeweler so we're talking this would be three days because it took you two days to help sort the books and move the books and and sell the books um it would be a third day to find a jeweler uh the rubies are valued at 200 and 300 gold each 200 and 300 yep and if you would like to sell them you can sell them to a jeweler for that much i'm gonna do that okay the diamond if you would like to get that appraised as well uh, yeah. That is worth a thousand gold. Uh, 
Uh, I'm going to hold on to the diamond, though. Okay. Good choice. Good choice. Just in case someone dies. All right, and then I'll, uh, I guess, hold on to my gold until everyone else is done, and we can all go shopping and buy some sweet stuff. Okay. Uh, Victor, what did you want to do? Uh, as far as selling stuff, I got that uh, dented plate armor that he's uh, gotcha. selling, and and a gem studded ivory toothpick and a crossbow. So, yeah, that's. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I would have helped Victor with like mending to try to get that plate armor looking as nice as possible for when he sold it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, g give me a uh, intelligence check, Zusanu, and give me an investigation check, Victor. Sixteen. Okay. Um, Victor, it takes you some time to find an armorer who would probably want to take this off your hands. Susanu, you're actually able to mend this pretty well. Um, you probably add a few gold to the value of it just from like popping some of these dents out, increasing everything over. Um, when you find an armorer uh, down the street, um, this would be the hefty anvil. They kind of take a look at it and they're like. Yeah, I got, it's it's an old style. I guess we'd I'd, we'd buy it, and it's this like short little younger dwarven man. He's kind of looking it up and down. He's like, it's funny. I I swear I've seen that make and model before, but it's gosh, it's gotta be at least a century or two. And he doesn't look like he's a century old to you, but you don't know. He's dwarven. Um, he would offer you. Uh, what is the price of plate armor in the book? It's is it three hundred? Fifteen hundred. It's fifteen hundred if it's like you know, gotcha. Regular shelf. He, he offers you twelve hundred for it. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll take that. Okay. And he kind of looks at it. And he's like, "All right." And he goes to spit in his hand, and then he's like, "Oh, sorry, sorry." And he goes and washes his hands, and then shakes your hand for it. So he washes his hand. Yeah, he washes his hand instead of spitting in it. Okay. Well, you know, Victor uh, shakes his hand, I guess. His, his small little uh, dwarf hand. Oh, they're actually pretty large. They, uh, they're, got, you know, they're... There's meaty? Yeah, okay. Big old meaty, okay, then Victor is impressed hands. with his meaty dwarf hands. And uh, he hands you the 1,200 gold and says, Well, if you find anything similar, I think I can make a market for it. Who knows? Maybe we'll bring this style back. Cool. Uh, yeah. So. Um, yeah, and then I guess the other stuff I don't have to sell right now. But, uh, yeah, I was going to check on, uh, go to Grail Hunt at some point and do, like, a surprise visit on that guy that's, like, representing uh, yeah. Prestige Worldwide. And you can do this while you're out and about, so... Uh, you can knock on the door of Grailhund Manor, searching for Victor Trask and an update on your captives, fellow and fellow um, item seekers. Maybe I don't even know how to classify the Grail Hunts at this point for you, but <laughs> you knock, and after a few moments, there is an answer. It is a butler figure. A uh, this would be a half elven uh, woman. Um, and she's dressed in butler's um, livery. Uh, yes, what would you like? Uh, well, I was hoping to speak uh, to the, you know, the lady of the house, yeah. Uh, Madam Grelhand is currently out shopping. Master Grelhand is in. Can I bring you to the parlor? Uh, sure. Yes, yeah, I'll speak to the, the mister. Okay. Um, you walk through the springtime courtyard that the snow has turned to mud at this point. Um, over on a bench, you see Victor Trask. He's got a flagon of ale in one hand, full plate armor, no weapons, just fists, uh, sitting there, drinking the beer, and he's like, Ah, oh, Vicky! Uh, how's it going uh, there, bud? Uh, the yep. half-elven butler is like, Oh, you you two know each other, do you? And she looks very disapprovingly over at Victor or at um at a uh, I think it's Justin Trask, yeah. Justin Trask, and um 
He goes, oh, it's this is the best job I've ever had. Well, uh, have you seen any action? Or have you just been sitting here drinking? Isn't isn't drinking action? Well, uh, we sent you here to yeah, keep a watchful right eye on these people who are currently, um, you know, you're all they got right now. Well, where's uh, where's where's the boss at? Oh, and uh, the half elven lady's like, I will take you to him. And she like sniffs and continues walking inside. All right. You follow her to the study. Um, the room in particular that I believe had the wrestling mat in it that you stole. <laughs> yeah. And you walk into this study, and inside is Master Grailhund, and he shrinks in his seat ever so slightly as he sees the butler leading you in, and he immediately begins shouting at her, Get out! Don't answer the door for these hooligans next time! God damn it! Off! Oh, off! Oh, damn it! What, what do you want? Please, don't hurt me! And he's, like, shrinking in his seat as the butler, like, quickly closes the door behind her. So. <laughs> well, I, uh, calm down there, bud. I uh, just came to, uh, you know, check on you, see how uh, Justin the uh, Ogre uh, was doing. <laughs> his job I, I, as he's just drinking make a persuasion check uh, persuasion mm, not bad <laughs> and you can see the color rising first from his neck under his collar through his neck above his chin across his cheeks and he begins shouting he's like the indignities that he has visited upon our family. He does not let us leave for the most part, unless it's shopping without any sort of um, um, he follows us everywhere damn it. He even so much goes as forth as to tuck us into bed whatever you've told him to do, you must stop it <laughs> Well, that can, uh, that can be taken care of. I mean, look, I know he's not the best, but this is what free gets you uh, and I know it's partially our fault, uh, but I've got a, you know, I'm going to be busy probably next, uh, for next week. But when I'm done being busy, uh, I could like, uh, you know, I could be a proper bodyguard for you. I mean, it, I, it cost you some money. Uh, yeah, but you're like a noble, so you could afford it. And, uh, so yeah, just, uh, figure I'd come by and see how things are going. Obviously not going well. I'll talk to Mr. Justin and, um, you know, get, get this all sorted out for you. And he sort of sinks into his chair and he's like, no, I'm sorry. I, to be fair, nobody else has come at us. I think everyone's sort of ignoring us and they consider everything that happened here to be a tragedy and people look down on us in pity. Frankly, I can't wait for the summer. I think we're leaving Waterdeep for the summer to the family estate out in the country. Uh, and he actually seems pretty defeated, if anything. Um... Mr. Trask himself is not a problem. He, uh, and my wife finds him soothing, considering that she lost her bodyguard. But send him away. It's okay. You don't need to guard us yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, if we go, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, if, uh, I mean, if you guys are leaving this place, what's going to happen? Are you, just, are you just selling it? Or are you just abandoning it? I mean, it'd be a shame of this to go to waste. Uh, you know, nice place. After the summer. We'll decide what happens to Grelhund Manor. But for now, I truly... I don't know. Uh, we have cousins elsewhere along the Sword Coast. The idea of leaving Waterdeep is a painful one, and yet I can't imagine our fortunes are be to, made to be made here or powers to be accumulated. Well... I mean, uh, good luck on your journeys there. I won't take up too much more of your time. Uh, no, I'll uh, get uh, get Justin out of here. Uh, no, wait, wait. I, if I were to employ him myself to come with us for the summer, would that be acceptable to you? <laughs> I mean, I, I have no need for him. It actually be. Uh, I mean, he's drinking for free at a tavern, so that'll you know, he's uh, he's kind of useless to us. So you can have him. Oh, well, the, <laughs> we will bring him with us this summer at the very least. Yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry to lose my temper. Um, just can you can you ask him not to tuck us into bed at night? Sure. I mean, 
Yeah, I mean, he's going to live here. We're not taking him back at the tavern, so he's living here. Uh, you're, he's your new employer. He'll do whatever you say. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell him. I'll tell him, uh, you know, in my, uh, in, you know, my charming way uh, to not tuck you in. Please. Oh, that yeah. would be much appreciated. And um, I guess thank you, but also damn you. You yeah. veritable hooligans. Well, I'm in a pretty good mood, but uh, if I wasn't, I'd probably uh, kill you. But, you know. And again, he sort of cowers <laughs> in his chair. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, take it easy. <laughs> I'll try. You leave his study. You find the butler standing on the other side of the door, and she's like, um, I'm going to lead you out now. Is that acceptable? Uh, that's acceptable, and then I would uh, inform Justin not to uh, tuck uh, these people in because they are adults and they don't need to be tucked in. Oh, okay. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know, the missus seems to like it. Yeah, well, uh, I mean, I think, like, you belong to them now, so uh, you live <laughs> here. <laughs> uh, don't come back to the tavern. If I see you back in the tavern, I'll probably kill you. Um... So, yes, have a good life, uh, Justin. Can you make an intimidation check? <laughs> <laughs> there he is okay. just uh, looking at Victor blinking. <laughs> um, Justin kind of like looks at you and he's like, oh, 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 that's a funny joke, Victor. And he like smacks you on the side. Yeah. And uh, Victor just walks away. Okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> And and he you hear him arguing it with the butler as you're like walking out the front gate. No, but the, the missus like it when I kiss man on head. Um, I mean, I think she'd really like it if you kissed her on the mouth, Justin. You know what I'm saying? I think she wants just like head kisses. She wants a mouth kiss, a big wet ogre mouth kiss. Oh, I don't want to kiss the mister on the mouth. No, nah, you kiss him. At, you're supposed to kiss everyone on the mouth. Oh, really? And he mm -hmm. looks at the butler and she's like, don't you dare. <laughs> the door the door closes. Yeah. All right. Yes. Anywhere else so this, is the most, this is the most words I've ever heard you say at one time. Uh, I think other than, yeah. I think, yeah, I'm done for now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and then I would inform the group. Uh, I don't know if anybody came with me, but I would let I mean, uh, them know that, like, you know, Grail Huns are abandoning, not abandoning, they're going to leave Waterdeep at some point, and it'd be a shame um, if all those nice things just went unused. Yeah. Are you suggesting we uh, well, go raid them? We'll see what happens. I don't know. That's, you know, Victor's just giving this information out. Whatever, however it gets used is Duly out, noted. Of, out of his control. Okay. Yeah. Um, one thing we should clear up before we move forward with anything else. What are you guys doing with Manchun? Dang. Oh, oh yeah. Man yeah we brought the body back with us. We brought the you body? Have, well, you have him with... Oh, did you not bring the body back? I know he's I dead. I have no idea what happened. Oh, okay. Was... Never mind. If you only oh, left yeah, the body, then I'm not going to worry about it. Yeah, I think we left him in the tower. Cause we, what we did, uh, was everyone grabbed like a chest cause we couldn't open those chests. So everyone was like, whoever could jumping grab one of those there. chests and was like jumping around with these magical Gosh. chests. That's my bad. Did you, did we kill Manchu? Mm -hmm. yep. just, oh yeah, that's right. No, we had him hostage and then you yeah. just put him out of his misery. Yeah, that's right. He was going to wake we, up. Uh, and we should have took a few out. hacks. It seemingly. <laughs> We should have kept like brought the body back so that uh, no one brings him back to life. Well, too too late now. Yeah, it'd be a shame if he came back to life. Well, we've got his spell book and his clothes <laughs> and his staff. But we murdered all his followers. So unless he yeah, wants he's to exit that he's tower, be like Mahatma Gandhi. Yeah. So. Okay. So then from Victor, um, Volknar, is there anything in particular that's not shopping that you would like to do besides selling the supplies? Uh... Mm. 
Did you buy anything? I didn't buy anything. What can you I, should what go can shopping. I buy with thousand, thousand? Well, well that's shopping related. I mean... If we want to go shopping, we can totally I go shopping. I think the Volknar's shopping, as far as buying stuff, is like number one priority as far as spending money. Because he's going to uh, be expensive. Could I... Uh, let me um, go to my city, go watch friends. And I'm going to talk to them. Give them like a description of the Manchun guy and see if they knew about him. I'm not going to tell okay. them that I killed him, but I'm going to tell them. I just want. I want to see what they knew about him. Okay. So, can you make a performance check for this description? Eight. Okay. It doesn't go great, but finally, when you remember his name and you drop the name uh, Manchun, they all sort of look at you in like surprise. Um. And they go on to detail this story of a wizard who hasn't been seen in quite some time, yet is supposedly a notorious fiend in the history of Waterdeep. An individual who has consistently tried and failed to take over Waterdeep for themselves. An individual who has been killed several times and yet either comes back to life or seems to have a clone that takes its place. And so uh, they know the name. It is detailed in the annals of the city guard training manual. And they tell you all of this. Okay. Um, I'd like to ask if there is some sort of dead or alive bounty or something on him. Um, I mean... Almost assuredly, though, anything of that nature would have to be dealt with um, with the Open Lord or Lady Vajra. Hmm. I'm familiar with Vajra. One of my boys has a huge crush on her. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, that's uh, on the Blackstaff herself. Well, that's, um, that's, that's quite the crush. He's shooting out of his league, but he's trying. Oh, well, seen plenty of that in our days. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Yeah, I heard about this guy. And, um, I was, I'm just asking around. Thanks I mean, if you, if you have any more information, we're here. Please don't hold anything back, Volknar. I oh, mean, look fine. at you a little suspiciously. I was like, it's all right. I, I thought I heard about this guy. I heard he, I knew it was bad news. I don't know. We, I, me and my companions might try to find him. If you wish, be careful. He's supposedly an incredibly powerful wizard. Yeah, he's probably not that powerful. <laughs> <laughs> I bet I can take him. As I flex. <laughs> <laughs> You're only adding to that eight that you rolled on your performance check. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'll leave the guards, and uh, I want to go back and tell the boys about what the guard said. Okay. And you uh, do so without issue? <clears throat> and uh, so now we know the bodies in the tower. We need to go get it. Is that what do you're saying? Go, yeah, yeah, sounds like we need to go get that body. Yeah, or Harry, do you want to talk to Vajra? Is she, she away saying? right now? She's away right now. I'm waiting to hear from her. Um, uh, yeah, I kind of want to go get the body, or at least get the head. Like right now? Ah, uh, I mean, dude, it took a long rest. I don't, I don't know if we don't need to do it at this moment, but... I think the, the sooner the better. I, so, so that was... That tower, uh, Volknar, uh, was way south, right? I don't remember. It yeah. was, yeah. So 
are we just gonna grab a body and through the sewers, bro? Yeah, the sewers, the sewer. okay. I like it. We haven't investigated the sewers. That's something. We gotta clean the clean the sewers out. You know, some gutter yeah, trash. We at least have a lock on our door, but that's about it. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Boats and hose. <laughs> for all of you who are muted. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was... Right. I feel like getting that body would be a good idea. Yeah, now that we know who he is, and like the the city guard gave us the rundown of how he was a very bad. That person. whole like has died multiple times thing that that got me. Something's going on. Yeah, right. I think we need to uh, we need to get that body. Yeah, Zusanu will gladly accompany Volknar. So depending on the day that you do this, you cannot go, Zusanu. Oh, you're right. I'm busy doing books. Volkner wants to be like, fuck your books. <laughs> we got a body to get. How much, uh, I mean, let's ask, uh, first, let's ask Zeus New how much money he's getting from those books. Uh, about 5,000. 5,000. That sounds pretty yeah. worth it to me. Uh, yeah, but <laughs> you go take body, care of that. The body is decomposing. Look, we need to get it now, Volknar, I'll come with you. You just had to ask instead of getting on your little soapbox and trying to make me feel bad about this. It's not gonna work, okay? Victor, I'm I can't, Victor. You, you, you know, look at me. You're always invited. Look at this. One Your second. Boy. Do you know? Look at me. Look I'm at me. Looking. I'm looking. <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> I'm all dressed, ready to go. All right. Alistair, right. Alistair, you coming? How long have you been waiting to pace of that picture? <laughs> I had like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Alistair? Can you update your token, please? What's up? <laughs> there he is. Uh, what do you think about this uh, going to get uh, Manchun's body? I think it's a terrible idea. Would you please elaborate on why it's a terrible idea? Um, that place was bad news. All right. Like, we don't want someone to revive him. Yeah, look, we get revived. I think it's too late now. If uh, if it were gonna happen, it would have already happened. I mean, he, we know where he is. His his token is still on the grounds. Victor killed him. If he's not there, we have to run out of that tower. Well, um, hmm. I mean, how long would this trip take? We went to yeah, uh, talk to the detective. Yeah, let's um, let's think about this. And I mean, Harold Harold's got wants to talk to his uh detective friend so i mean maybe we should you know sure all right if anything what time of day is it right now um so this would be on your first day of the three so far that we've sort of gamed out across the the group so this would be towards the end oh god i just like talk to your different detective friends but victor and i are leaving in the morning now you're gonna wait till morn. I need you to get information. It's Harold. Harold's getting the info, right? Wait, what? Who's getting the info from their detective friend? Uh it's Harold. I was gonna go get him. Yeah, but I, I was just gonna tell him what happened and see if uh, I don't know. Tell I him think... of this great adventure and see if he knows uh, anything else going on. I mean, I don't think you should tell him that we killed him. Are you don't wearing help. the new robes, Harry? Oh, Harry is attuned and wearing them. Cool. Nice. I wouldn't say he killed Gave him. I am. You will know, probably know that, <laughs> that we killed him if you go talk to him. I say yeah, we he's... get the body tonight. I say we do a midnight run. Yeah. I'll just say I found him. Everyone's got a Zent ring, too. I don't know if we're all wearing it. Right. but I've got mine in my bag. Also, speaking of robes, would I have been able to, like, pay a clothing store person to like hem and adjust the robes to fit me and maybe like dye them sure 
Because I, I have like the non magical version. That's like ten gold. I would do that. Get a nice like deep purple to match the uh, the cape that Harry got me. Done and done. Takes two days. Okay, on to Harry for going to speak with um, Vincent oh Trent. Thank you. Um, you knock, go down the alley, and you, you knock on his door. Um, there is smoke rising from the inside of uh, through the chimney. Um, you can see a small candlelight, and out from the back, you see him walk. You can actually sort of make out. It looks like he's maybe even cleaned the glass on the windows next to the door. Um, he opens the door, multiple locks, opens it for you. Ah, Harry, come in, come in. Business, I assume? Uh, of course. As always, as always. I mean, proceeds to sit down in his comfortable chair, points you to the same chair you've sat in multiple times, lights his pipe. So, how can I help you? Hey, where you been? I've been uh, I've been trying to get a hold of you the past couple uh, couple of days. Um, one could call it a little bit of hibernation. A few days off, uh, you know, a few days in. The office was closed, even if I was home. I left you a little present outside the wood door next last time I came to check on you. Oh. Nowhere to be found. Just out of game for a moment. Did you leave a letter? No, it was a uh, <laughs> it was a ball of yarn, like a cat ball of yarn, and, from and Bob the, Love Shop. Gotcha. Uh, you see the yarn nowhere in sight. Um, he goes, uh, "Did you leave a ball of yarn?" I did. I got it from uh, from Zoblov down the street. Uh, um, your gift is appreciated. Um, I am trying to turn it into a pillowcase at this time. Ah. A hobbyist. Of many flavors. Uh, so then Harry stands up from his comfortable and kind of like poses his new uh, robes. Says, what do uh, you think? Uh, fashionable after sorts. Um, strange. They, they look both formal and... Are they magic? Oh, very. Oh, uh, do tell. Ah, just they uh they really help uh I really feel like more powerful. When well, I wear them. Bravo, bravo. And How they look you... sharp. Uh quite. The uh the shoulder pads in particular are immaculate. Um where did you come across such a an item of as that? Oh, well, you know, just me and the gang from Prestige Worldwide just adventuring out, trying to fight crime, you know. In bad guys, make a deception check. Hot Nat 20. He goes, I must have been quite the adventure. Quite the it adventure. was, it was a doozy. Impressive. We came out victorious. Always good to hear. But hey, I know I've been at, I asked you before, but it's it's getting to be really important. We've been trying to solve this this fireball bombing outside of our thing. There seems to be a lot of gang violence, and we really just we need to put an end to this. We you got any you got any leads to get into the uh the, is it the wait which one is it now Zents or Xanathar is the Xanathar. Yeah. Is the one we need to go to, right? Next. Yep. Yeah, Xanathar. You got any you got any ends with the Xanathar? I do not individually, though I have learned a few things in the last week or two. It seems that some of the violence has slowed down over the past day in particular. No stabbings in the street for once. And I wonder if it's related to a number of things. Zents suddenly seem scared in the bars. It was strange. I gathered this last night in particular. The the Xanathar Guild has not been sending 
people above streets for the past week in particular, it seems that there was a um, some sort of mishap uh, at one of the Xanathar's bloody celebrations, is my understanding. Several of his lieutenants were killed. Very so... chuckle. <laughs> and he kind of like glosses over it. And so it sounds like either the Zents went on a suicide mission down there, or something else happened that I haven't been able to figure out. In regards to an entry point, the best I can offer is going through Skullport. Skullport? So, as a citizen of Waterdeep Harry, you would actually know Skullport. Yeah. It's um, a notorious sort of like underground city that is the beginning of the partially like the Underdark beneath Waterdeep, also connected to the uh, the well within the Awning Portal. And it sits at this like crossroads of like the Undercity of Waterdeep as a criminal haven and everything else below it. Yeah, and we kind of figured that out while we were heading down there, right? Or... You know that the Xanathar's Guild is within Skullport? And that when you went down into the Xanathar's Guild, you basically bypassed it. Oh, okay. I see. I remember now. And the yawning portal is it goes through it directly. Like if that if we were to take that route, we would have to go through Skullport if we went through the portal. Is that kind of the gist? If you if you went down the well of the yawning portal, you would be dropped above Skullport, two levels, roughly, mm -hmm. and then you could make your way down. Right. Okay. All right. Um, Harry would ask him um, if he, uh, what he's been able to, or kind of, I guess Harry would try to probe him to see if what type of, seemingly is he investigating what's going on right now, you know? Um, so I Make guess, a... yeah, so Harry would kind of ask him, like, oh, you, you know, are you also, you know, can I help you with anything? What have you found out so far? Make a persuasion uh, check. Yeah. Oh, where is it? Persuasion. Seventeen. Um, he says... Uh, my leads are all strange. There's been activity in and around the Castle Lantern Mansion in particular. It feels as if they're suing something bigger. In fact, they have a large feast, a large banquet planned at some point this summer, towards the end of the summer. Um, but there's been talk of it moving up. There are... Well, the, the gang violence and, and Vajra... Safra, the, the Black Staff, has not been seen for several days now. Um, all of these things feel as if something is happening in Waterdeep. And mind you, that is to the side of this thing that I keep hearing amongst the nobles over the past two weeks, this thing of the grand game. Oh, Never Ember's treasure? 500,000 missing gold dragons? All of this, I believe, is connected in some way. Hell, I think it's invading in on some of my other investigations. Petty infidelities, the sort of things that typically make my bread and butter. That said, this is the sort of thing that I think I take a step back from because it's out of my league. What if I told you I've been investigating the Zents? And he looks you up and down. And he notices the ring on your hand and the robes on your body. And he chuckles himself and he says, then it looks as if you're doing quite well for yourself if you are. Could say that. <laughs> I think I would. Have you joined them then? Pointing at your ring? Uh, no, not at all. An odd symbol to have on your body then. Yeah, it's uh, just to keep me out of trouble, hopefully, really. And I hope it deals, uh, keeps you out of said trouble. 
Oh, maybe I uh, might head my way down to Skullport then. Try to uh, see what I can see if I can get into the Zents. Go see what I can find. Well, it's a dangerous path to head down into Skullport. If you do so, again, I wish you safety. And if you really wish to seek to meet with the Xanathar, then you're a braver fool than I thought. All right, good day, sir. Until next time. At your service, okay. I am Vincent Trent, investigator at large. And um, I, I would ask, no more yarn, please. That's not needed. Noted. Harry, I uh, will take his leave. Okay. Back to Prestige Worldwide. Worldwide, worldwide. Um, you do so. Uh, is there anything else that's not shopping that folks would like to do? If not, uh, no. I would say let's take our like five minute break. Then we'll do the shopping. Then you guys can go get a body if that's what you want to do, and we'll determine the next bit from there. I found a detailed pricing table. I will use this, and it's gonna like I don't mind giving this to you guys. So I'm gonna send this over because if if there's something on here that you're like very interested in, um. We can try to figure it out. But so for the plus one armor and the plus two armor, for example, plus one armor would be the cost of the armor and then an additional 1,500 gold on top of it. So that means plus one full plate would be 3,000 gold. So if you have the armor, you don't have to source the armor for it. So it would just be the cost of the enchantment. And the time required per type of enchantment is going to be different. So plus one armor would take a week to enchant, plus two would take a month. Wait, it would take how long? One month for a plus two. Four, oh, ten weeks. And can we do that for um, weapon two? Ten so you can. One weapon. There are, so if you scroll down on this table, there are Weapons, uh, like plus one, plus two, so on and so forth. Weapon. The only other thing I, I was going to ask is, um, the Manchun robes, are those going to be recognizable? Like, is this going to be a thing? Um, that, uh, Harry, imagine. So, we um, know, you know? Make, a, go make to, a wisdom check on that, Harry. Go to the same person I went to to have my robes altered and died. Well, that was my second question. Who is going to be, is like, can you, like, Transfer, um, you know, that, uh, magic stuff to like another, you know, item to item type thing. You cannot. <clears throat> so, like, if you wanted to take the power of those robes and imbue them into right, a different... yeah. No, so, you, no, you would okay. not be able to do that. Yep. All right. Would he be able to like pay someone to make? Oh, also, Nat twenty on the wisdom. Um, you doubt that these robes are going to be recognizable uh, by anyone except anyone from the Zentrum who knows the individual who typically would wear them. Uh, that and better. the rings. <laughs> somewhere between that and the rings, though, you suspect that if a person of the Zentrum does know who these belong to, they are going to probably lose their shit. In a good way or a bad way? Maybe both. Unclear. You you really don't know on, on that. Like it depends on the person, right? Like they might fight or flight. Can he uh wear regular robes over his super nice robes? Double robe. Yeah, you can totally Gandalf it where you would like toss something <laughs> over. Guys, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. He, oh, I he, want. He can't want have to... them adjusted at all. Oh, we'll leave it. I'm good. I want them to know. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that we slaughtered, you know, one way or the other. You know? We gotta go back and retrieve the nude body of... <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, he's wearing my ill-fitting duck clothes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I was thinking either they might go, oh, this dude is like the new Manchun. You know, and I might get some followers. Potentially, uh, right? Hey, maybe. 
You could be the new Manchun in the, of, the, of the biz. You could run That's your own saying. cult. He who ousts the king becomes the king, right? I mean, we did it as a group, but I'm just saying, you know. You're wearing the robes. The crown, you know, wearing the robes. Oh, we right. should uh, we should enchant one of Volknar's javelins with javelin of lightning. <laughs> it's only a thousand gold, and it'll give him a lightning spear. Can I retrieve it? Yeah. Well, you better. Nice. Yeah, javelin of lightning is fucking. That'd be sick. pretty cool. I like that. Should we? Uh... Also, whatever you do, all your bashing with plus one would be even two. <laughs> Like a axe or whatever, you know, battle axe or whatever yeah, you, you can want. Add, you can, looks like you can add plus one to it for a thousand. But there's like other effects you might be able, like life stealing. You can add so that I, to it. Let me let me just say one thing: any armor or weapons that you want to add an effect onto can only hold one effect, plus a plus one or plus two or whatever it is. Okay. But yeah, you you can double up on them. So the the javelin of lightning, to have a plus one javelin of lightning would cost two thousand gold in that instance. Do it. I will just Ooh. also toss it out there that I played a barbarian, a furbolg barbarian one time. He used a javelin of lightning, and it was way fun. It was amazing. Yeah, I I'm gonna buy like all your rage, the, but that has nothing to do with like the rage. Can you use though, great right? weapon master with a Spear, though? Yes, that's what I'm asking. Yeah. I think mean, it's melee. Oh. So that's why I was saying do the melee weapon. So when you do all your fun stuff, you also get the plus one. I mean, why are we saying it's either or? Fucking so well, that's could, what I'm saying. You could do a throwing axe of lightning. You could, you could throw it out, right? That is totally fine. It doesn't have to be a javelin, necessarily. Ooh. Yeah, I am gonna get, I am gonna contribute a thousand gold to get Volknar a throwing weapon of lightning. There you go. Uh, is that, I don't know. Is that what we're gonna do? Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that's what I'm gonna do. I have a yeah. shit ton of gold. Like you guys can keep doing other stuff, but I think that would be a cool thing for Volknar to have. How much gold do we have in the bank? Uh like nine hundred. We have 900 in the bank, and Zeus New has, like, 6,000. Yeah, I have 6,500 gold, dude. Fucking, like, let's just go nuts. Oh, well, I mean, we could plus two our my great weapon master. Or my great weapon. But it would, t it would take a month. Oh, uh, yeah? Like, in-game. And, like, I don't think we have that much time. Do the plus one and the lightning. Oh, I said, yeah, I said those eyes. Yeah, right? So I said, how long does the uh, like the plus one like the thousand gold enchantments cost? Or take? So, so some of these they will if you pay a little bit of a premium, they might be able to procure them instantly or within a day or two from one of their sister shops because Aurora's Realms extends across more than just the Sword Coast, and so if you provide a travel fee of fifty gold per item, you can procure them faster. Yes, let's do that. Well, how long does it take otherwise? Oh, uh, 10 day? Otherwise, it takes them a full 10 day to make the item if it's a plus one or an uncommon uh, magic item. And then depending on the level of magic item, it can take a lot longer. I'll throw some lightning javelins. I'll be Thor. Do you want, do you want a javelin or a throwing hammer? Or a throwing axe? That's better for my character. The axe, so you can do your weapon master rage attacks with it as well. And then also throw it from distance if you want. That's probably best. Yeah. Wait, like he, his, he can throw his he, great axe? I don't think he can throw Well, you can throw, throw any axe. weapon. I, mean, he can I throw, actually yeah. think you can. I think it's a hand axe that he can throw. Yeah. yeah so I thought you could actually throw like, everything. So he can. But if you were to do it to the great axe, he would be throwing it at disadvantage. Because it's too large to normally use like that. And then he wouldn't have his axe. Huh, but you could... What so about, like, of... a, what's the one-handed axe? You could throw that, right? Yeah. 
or what uh let's 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 see what other options we have for him like what 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 like cool weapon would you want to throw could and could you <laughs> i guess the do the javelin who cares because what's a plus one when you're going to be doing like double all your rage attacks like do it on like, the ja- javelins thing. are pretty cool like i can see like yeah. he's got a javelin like, you're throwing like slung, a lightning slung bolt. across his back like yeah, sticking up over like, his it's shoulder. It's like grabbing a lightning bolt off your back and throwing it through someone. That's sick. I would do that. I vote for that. Can kidding. we put the javelin of lightning thing on a boomerang? Whoa. So there is a. Uh, I'm gonna say that that's like no. You would not get it back in the way that you would expect because there are magic weapons that return to your hand. Oh, what is the, what are those? I want one of those. Uh, Where can uh, I procure one of those? <laughs> and for how much? Let me find it. That might be like a wondrous item, actually. I, you know what? I found out that there was such thing as um, it's like a throwing knife, like on a rope. You know, like the scorpion thing, but it's like an actual weapon, it has like a name. Like a knife on the end of a rope. Sick. No idea. Okay, so it's a hammer of thunderbolts, and you have to be wearing a belt of giant strength or gauntlets of ogre's power to be able to use it. And it, you can use one of its charges to return to your hands. But <laughs> it is a legendary item. <laughs> so it probably would not be purchasable. Uh. Okay. I'll just stick with my lightning lure. <laughs> so the uh the, the prayer beads, are they single use? Uh prayer beads. Bless or smithing? Yeah, I'm saying prayer, prayer bead bless, cast bless as a bonus action. Now that AA Roth is gone, they are. Let's see, two thousand. <laughs> the Trident of Fish Command. I'm gonna say that it would be for a full necklace. Have one of lightning. There How many is that? One D four plus two. Uh, I'm not gonna spend two two thousand gold on that. And yeah, the Ion Stone of Protection for plus one to AC is only a thousand. Yeah, that ma- and that makes sense because like to get a little bit of AC to most of your army would be an extra like fifteen hundred. But the Ion Stone of Protection does use up, I believe, an attunement slot. It does. But then like the Ring of Protection, which does the same thing, plus one to AC is three thousand. But it doesn't require an attunement slot, right? I'm pretty sure it does. Okay. I think I think can't the the ion stones can't they be destroyed though? They can. So that's probably why it's cheaper. It, or it can be like knocked out of the air or snatched away. Oh, that does require attunement. Interesting. Ring of protection. Ooh, oh, the if... ring of protection gives you a plus one to your saving throws as well. Oh, all right. That's pretty cool. That's kind of amazing. Uh, so, what if I wanted to add the the wand of the war mage enchantment to like a cape? So it'd be like the cape of the war mage. Uh, that would just be a thousand thousand gold. I am a hundred percent going to do that. That would take a week. What if I day. paid them more? Didn't you say we could like expedite it for extra gold? If you want to try to do so, you can have the time for an extra five hundred gold. Oh damn! I thought you said it was like we give fifty gold per item and we get. Something. Oh oh you oh um so because you're doing it onto your own item because so either they can source the item for you, and that's where that would be the extra fifty gold where they would like teleport away to go find it. Oh okay. But if you're sourcing the item yourself. 
and you're asking them to expedite it. There's only like, what is the phrase? Uh, nine women can't grow a baby in one month. <laughs> I think I still might do it. Yeah, I'm still I'm still gonna do it. Okay. So, how much gold are you gonna drop on this? Are you gonna just for the ten? Okay. And you dropped a thousand for lightning, a javelin lightning for Volknar. Yes. That would cost an extra fifty. They don't have that on that on hand in particular, I'll, but they I'll can it. get it to you that day. I will do the day. extra fifty so that Volknar can equip that right now. And it takes them half an hour, but they come back, and you hear them teleporting away. And after half an hour, they come back with the javelin of lightning for you. I walk over to Victor, and I'm like, hey, Victor, this uh, I saw this. This looked like something that you might like. You know, it would fit you pretty well. Uh, What was it? Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I go to Volknar. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> like, hey, Volknar. Bye. I was uh, I was browsing. I saw this thing. This looked pretty cool. It seemed like something you might like. I'd hand it over to him. Send Harold. Me? Oh, okay. who's? I thought like I heard someone... a snore. Yeah, Volkner. Oh, well, I'm here. No, I'm here. Oh, uh, Alistair. Haven't heard it from him in a while. <laughs> All right. I I, I just I I just it's getting PTSD. I heard someone's like. <laughs> I just heard snore and I got scared. Yeah. Uh, Dropping like flies over there. Uh, continue. Uh, I have a question. All right. I see Trident of Fish Command on here. Mm hmm. <laughs> what about um, it? It seems pretty cool, pretty cool. Um, but would it be fair to say the other trident that is in <laughs> trident of because it's the same rarity, trident of hellfire trident would be here. Fire trident. It'd be equivalent to the trident of fish command. I don't see that here. Only see the Trident of the Fish Command. Okay. I mean, what are you envisioning in particular? Well, I was just searching Trident. Uh, <laughs> I was looking for that item to see what the Trident of the Fish one to see what it did. And it like did something with like fish animals, right? Uh, yeah. Dominate beasts or whatever. But exactly. then I just saw that there's another one, Trident, and I was just uh, I was saying it's called Health. There it is. The Alistair Snore. Uh, is that Alistair? I think it's, yeah. I think it's Voltar. It's not like Voltar. <laughs> hey. Oh, maybe Voltar. <laughs> okay, I was literally in the middle of messaging. I tell you, I think he's snoring, dog. But you, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. His thing lit up, though. I just have Is Alistair talking? I need to leave and come back if he is. I just haven't heard him. Uh, that's why no. I, why he, I was accusing him. He's not. No, yeah. I think I think it was Volknar. I think he just I think snapped it. Was it. Me too. <laughs> he snapped oh, okay. I think it was me too. You like, doing a bit of day drinking now. there, Volknar? What's going yeah, on? Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, all right. So anyway, this Hellfire Trident, it, it is a oh, does Hellfire. One key, yeah, yeah. Hellfire Trident is the name of it. It's a uncommon, the same as the fish one. It does the same damage. And I think it all it does is uh just have flavor text instead of the spell. Is that in the list I sent you? Where are you finding that? I, no, I just I'm searching it on my character sheet to like because that's how I could see what the spell that it did. Oh. When I was searching for it, this popped up. So give me a moment. So, I... So it's a it's in D and D Beyond is basically where I'm seeing it. Yeah, yeah. Just in my character sheet, and I was just curious if uh, it's just um flavor. It does a it's a one d eight trident. <laughs> the oh, weapon it's... is fashioned from infernal iron and traced with veins of hellfire that sheds dim light in a five foot radius. Harry would use that as a spear if he could buy it. 
the you equivalent can of the fish one. So totally the fish, the request that. All right. Uh, Zeus. Wait, how? <laughs> can I borrow 400? 400? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I have 400. I need 400. It says the fish one was 800, so assuming it's the same. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it's actually less. I'm going to say it's All 500. Right, All right. Let me need 100 bucks. All right. Gold. I can do that. All right, Harry would buy that trident or request that trident. Uh, okay, um, five hundred gold. And they actually let me just double check one thing. They actually have that on hand, I think. They have that on hand. Weirdly enough. Yeah, so that's gonna be that's gonna replace Harry's like bow staff. Okay. He's gonna carry. He's gonna carry the trident. That glows at the end, and uh, so also, uh, just so everyone knows, if a humanoid gets killed by this thing, their soul goes to like the river Sphinx, and they become devils. Oh damn! So That's I basically deep. create devils if I kill humanoids with this thing. <laughs> and I cast light at the end of it, five foot, just a little bit. Which I know uh, Alistair's asleep, but we should get him something, too. Um, do, you th well, do you think he'd want like a stronger oh. weapon or better armor? Let's get Alistair some... Not, let's just get him some studded, studded leather and uh, silver his rapier or whatever. What, what would the... Uh, I think that's reasonable. Like the, the plus one to make it magic damage? Well... Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, what would that cost just to, well... Silvering is wicked cheap. Yeah, I'd see, I don't want to spend <laughs> like a bunch of, I, I don't want to spend a bunch of money when he's not here to, like, say what he's thinking, so I, I just keep it simple. Yeah, well... And you never know. I yeah. need that silvered weapon every now and then. But no, let's give him, uh, let's, yeah, get him something. What was the armor? Will that help his AC? Uh, the studded leather is like 45 gold and would give him plus one. Because, uh, okay. yeah. I think it's 12 AC plus dex. And since his AC, his dex is four, so we get him to 16. Because I think he's at 15. Is he at 15 yeah. right now? Is there, what's the, I'm, what's like the, high, the highest ranked light armor? I think it's studded. Uh, hold up. I gotta check his character sheet. Um. So his AC is fifteen right now. So yeah, the the light. Um, cause he, I don't think he'd want to do more than light. If he can't do more than light, cause uh, maybe the elven. Check to see the elven. Uh, what was the elven chain or whatever? I mean, yeah. Oh no, cause that might be. You just have to make sure that it's not higher than his dex, right? Yeah, there's, uh... Is there, like, a way... Oh, okay, there's a search function. Elven Chain. Okay, that's 14 AC. You are considered proficient with this armor, even if you lack proficiency with medium armor. It's 14 AC plus what, though? Because some of them uh, cap yeah, at two can... plus two dex. Uh, it doesn't say. Uh, I think it counts as a chain shirt. But if oh, I look okay. at chain shirt, it would be, um, it caps at, weird, doesn't say there. Give me two seconds, let me see if I can find it on this other thing. <laughs> doesn't it say it right in the inventory? Um, Dex mod is max two. Okay, so it'll still be sixteen. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, studded leather is forty-five gold, just to get him a plus yeah. one. So I feel like that's yeah. The move. I, I think that's a safe call. And then, sure. Uh, yeah. So you want a plus one studded leather for him? Uh, well, just just a regular studded leather. Because what would I like to make a studded leather a plus one? What would that 
that would be 1,045. Okay, so yeah. So that would get him to 17, and then just getting a regular studded leather would just get him to 16. And I would... I don't want to spend fifth like that much over a thousand when he's not even here to like say anything. Uh, yeah, I think it's just go get get him the regular one for now. Always like we can, we can always like retcon it and be like you know over like Discord or whatever over the week. Yeah, yeah. it's totally fine. Uh, okay. Well, if I mean you've got all the gold there, uh, Zeus. So if you want to do it, go for it. Getting on the plus one, you mean? Yeah, the plus one studded leather. It's expensive. Yeah, be what a little over a thousand. Okay. Uh, Harry would like to do some retconning if possible. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. So, so real quickly, the Hellfire Trident, I yeah. realized it was it's a throwing weapon. So I'm just not proficient oh, with it. It's not, it's not no, the type I... Not necessarily. You can but, throw it, but you don't have to. Well, it said I had minus one when I do its attack. Oh, because yeah, it's, it's a strength-based strength weapon. weapon. Okay. So then... If there was such, there is such thing as Hellfire everything, and there's a Hellfire quarterstaff. <laughs> so you can have an obsidian right. black Hellfire quarterstaff yeah, with that... flames interlaced on the obsidian. Yeah, that with the five foot radius dimmy thingy. Yeah. Can I you, can I swap the trident for a quarterstaff? That's my question. Hundred percent, and it's the same. Right, there we go. Dust. It's a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> you still have minus one to it though. But at least I'm plus two for the to hit. Instead of minus one. <laughs> because he's proficient with it. Yeah, exactly. um, the other thing to note about this would be that uh, it will still send a soul directly to the river sticks that then becomes a lemur. A lemur. Yeah. It's exactly the same. There's one of everything I found out. That's what... <laughs> like, gotcha. literally one of every weapon. Sorry. I, I think that might be from Avernus, which maybe we should talk about playing next at some point. But yeah, I have no idea what that means. But That's one of the other adventures. Go to hell and back. I want. I got its staff now, and um, I think Harry was drawn to this uh, ever since he donned these black robes. Gotcha. Look sick. Is there anything else shopping wise you guys would like to do? Uh, Volknar. Oh, I yeah, I'd get a bunch of uh healing kits. Oh, okay. Are you gonna make them? Or are you gonna? Uh... Oh, wait, we should get healing kits and healing potions. Yeah, definitely need potions and kits. So you're already using three days, maybe even four, to do all this, Susanu. Oh yeah, yeah I'm buying. I'm not. I'm not going to make any potions. Definitely don't have time oh. for that. Okay. Um, roll me a two d ten. Five. Okay. So you're able to source together five potions of healing, fifty gold apiece. So two hundred and fifty gold for those. Okay. And then the healing kits you're able to get one d twenty of. And that would just be for the cost that's in the player's handbook, which I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, damn. 18. So if you want to, you can buy 18, but I think they're like 10 gold apiece. 5 gold apiece. 5 gold apiece. So that would be 90 gold. If you want, you can do that. I don't think I need quite that many. I'll do uh, 8 of them for even 40. Okay. Um... Volknar, did you want to buy something? Um, I don't know. What did we decide I was buying? Uh, I think you should get the a weapon. Lightning, a, a lightning, lightning weapon. Grab, and then I was like, so then I took a nap. <laughs> God damn you, it. You were going to think you were going to use your gold to, uh, to upgrade your weapon? And I bought you the lightning spear or the lightning javelin? How much is, uh... What was I gonna plus one? Or was I gonna plus two? It. 
I got twelve hundred gold. I think a plus, plus two just takes a long time. That's the only thing. Yeah, get just get a in, plus in one. I mean, at yeah. the, at the end of this adventure, we're getting fifty thousand bucks. That's like a plenty of time. To, yeah, we'll have plenty of time to do other stuff. Um. You basically traded your alchemical supplies for a plus one on your greatsword. Yeah. Uh, Volknar wants a plus one on his greatsword. Done and done. <laughs> All right, cool. I'll and then uh, also like Volk, uh, Volknar related, um, did you want, did we determine if he can wear medium armor and still rage? rage? I think that's like a thing. I think right? so. I think that's the idea, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so did you want the medium armor, Volknar? Uh, it sounds like the best move. All right. Uh, Victor spends some of his newfound wealth to buy his boy, uh, half plate. Yeah, half plate armor. Which Good. is 750 gold, so. Boom. What a generous yeah. gift. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I just got from that plate armor I sold, so. Um, and then as far as non, uh, fancy stuff, uh, Victor wants to get a chest, regular old chest, just so he can put his tools in because he's lugging around a sledgehammer, shovel, pickaxe. That's all very heavy. All right. There's a lot of stuff going on. So I add a half, plate half to my, uh, yeah, you got, now you have a half plate, half plate armor should and a, get and a javelin of lightning. Don't forget about that. Javelin. Yeah, that's probably the coolest thing. Yeah, that thing's... I had one of those last campaign. It was awesome. Were you a barbarian? I was a druid. Fighter? Oh, druid. Nice. Oh, yeah, our paladin uh, quit, and he inherited the javelin. Gotcha. All right. So I got the javelin. I got the half plate. What else do I need to do? Take off a thousand gold? Did, uh... Uh, oh, wait, I think it was, was it a thousand to plus one the, or was it 500 to plus one the great axe? I don't know. Thousands. Thousand? And a thousand for the javelin that Zeus paid. Alright, so remove a thousand gold, is this correct? Yeah. Sounds like it. Alright, so how do I plus one my great axe? You have to add, um, a new item. Uh, yeah, you just go to add and then... Type in great axe, and it should be a green one, I think. Inventory. So go to inventory, manage inventory. Great axe plus one. Yeah. Okay. Same thing with the lightning javelin. Cool. All right, I did it. Fantastic. Uh, anything else? Um, uh, can we get something for Grub Grub? What does he have a weapon? Uh, he's like he Grub, Grub. he's got dual clubs, right? He's coming on the like he he's does ready have to dual go. Clubs. We silver clubs. Is oh, that a thing? what if we put nails in his clubs? Yeah, yeah let's definitely get him some fancy ass clubs. You can totally silver the clubs. That's not an issue. <laughs> Can we give him silver gloves and <laughs> some batons. Yeah, <laughs> they, they look like bowling pins or something. No bowling pin. Yeah, yeah let's can we? Yeah, let's silver uh, a pair of uh, double clubs for him. That's not a problem. And that make him nice and shiny, so he's hopefully he's really impressed and happy. Can, can Victor have made the clubs with his woodworking? Sure. Uh, and Kenny, we have a prestige worldwide um, insignia stamped either on it or carved on it, the handle from Victor. Yes, definitely. This would be a gift from the group to <laughs> Grub Grub for really holding it down and also uh, stepping it up and joining. For excellent service. Yeah. Uh, well, is it? Yeah. We got we got to wait a little bit for these weapons to be imbued or whatever. Um, so I'm I'm gonna say you you guys can pay an extra hundred and fifty gold on top of everything just to make sure you have it all right now. Um, from the kitty. 
Yeah, well, 150 gold from the uh, from the bank coming in. Everyone, equip your shit. Okay. I just wanna advertise the bar during the 10 day if we're not gonna do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Did we abandon getting the body? I said, I think we. Should. Harry's not into getting the body. I say we get the body. There was a vote. Baja's gonna want the body, dude. Yeah, gonna, I mean, you're gonna, you're gonna woo her. You're gonna win her over with the body, Harold. Dude, when she gets a glimpse of my new robes with my staff, yeah, with holding, with me and she's she's gonna head her in your hands as you oh, wear his. Oh, uh, and by by wand of the war mage, I meant rod of the pact keeper. Oh, that's totally different. Yeah, I know. I mean, is it? Classic like zoots and it's, 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 they're, they're both uncommon. One is just like warlock specific. Wand of the Pact Keeper. And what was the other one? Wand of the War Mage? Yeah. I might actually nix that. Give me a moment. Uh, oh, no, that's fine. That's totally fine. Okay. So that will be my Cape of the Pact Keeper. Gotcha. Oh, also, uh, would that the empty the the yellow diamond elemental gem that was it was empty, but I fixed it up. Could I have sold that for anything? You could sell that. So uh, you can sell that for a hundred gold specifically to Aurora's realms. I would do that. Done. Um, anything else that folks would like to do in particular? Broke. Got no money? More. Got like 40. Just enough to get some... Oh, just enough to go gamble. Harry would uh, go celebrate the dungeon crawl, and, uh, <laughs> the new gear, and go out like a night out on the town, try to gamble. Okay. Uh, Victor will bodyguard you. Join. Now make sure no one's uh, trying to fleece me. Yeah, my uh, okay. pro so now that Victor has this new shield, his passive perception is eighteen. So. Whoa. Okay. Yeah, I like it. Um, that is noteworthy. So when the two of you go out on the town, you first attempt to go to like a random tavern, bar, and you nobody wants to gamble with you. Somewhere between the robes and your elaborate bodyguard in incredibly ornate, disturbing looking armor. Nobody just, you know, nobody wants to play dice with you. Uh, nobody wants to play cards. Nobody wants to do anything. Um, it takes you some time, and, and it takes you time to find the more upscale bars. Um, go ahead and roll a d20. Okay. Seventeen. Um, you actually end up winning some money, sitting down playing some cards, and and you do so both through luck and through skill. Um, you end up winning about fifty gold this evening. That said, between your ornate, uh, your ornate um, appearance and your sturdy-looking friend in the back. A lot of people don't want to play cards with you maybe as long as you would have preferred. Uh, uh, Victor, Harry, you you don't see anything necessarily untoward. Harry tosses uh, Victor 10 gold for his services. Oh, uh, yeah, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I've, I've got plenty of gold. Uh, but thank you for the thought, Harold. I appreciate it. We do, man. We're a team. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look like... Uh, Anybody's, uh, so uh, Harry has 70 trouble. gold on him. So Harry would uh, pull out like a little count out like 50 gold and uh, throw it down on the table and see if anyone the bar, whoever they are, wants to do a uh, one-time game of chance for 50 gold. If he has any uh, Make a persuasion check. Persuasion, you say.
A 19. Ooh, nice okay. roll. Um, the bar goes quiet, and everybody kind of looks over at you, and finally you hear a voice, Oh, I got it. I'll take this on. And waddling out from between the legs of many of the patrons is a barefooted halfling individual, sleeves rolled up, tankered in hand, pant legs rolled up, and he looks real funny. Um, he's got like hair puffing out of his chest through his shirt. He's got short, bristly um, brown hair, tan skin, um, eyebrows longer than fucking caterpillars. And yet he takes a swig of the flag and tosses it back over his shoulder. And one of the other patrons randomly catches it. And he goes, you got luck. Bring it here, man. What are we doing? What are we playing? Uh, is there a uh, like a common game, tavern game of luck? Would be uh, commonplace. Uh, there is, and yet you know it to be an incredibly dangerous one that is mostly played in the, um, the dock ward. And it would be, um, Executioner. Oh, well. Now, you know that... Gold, nobody, I don't know how much, uh... No, nobody, loses nobody loses their life. Nobody loses their life. But you are both blindfolded, and you both put your hands in the middle of the table... And somebody uses an axe, and you have to pull your hands away before the axe hits the table. Remember, you got the, uh, that uh, that lucky feet, Harry. <laughs> <laughs> so. And you can hear, uh, yeah. and, and you can, if you want to propose this game, you can. It is not traditionally played in this type of establishment, and yet that is probably the game that comes to mind. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you yeah, you know what? No, that's what. That's exactly what Harry would uh would throw down. He would say, uh, uh what does Vi wait? What does Victor have on him? Uh, what do you mean? I've got it's your weapon because you're with me. Oh, uh, my weapon uh, is called yeah. Corpse Slayer. Uh, uh, so if there's any corpses involved kind, here, I'll fuck them up. Like, what kind of weapon is it? Uh, it's a long sword. Long sword. Um, yeah, so Harry would propose, um, a game of, what was it called? Uh, Executioner, uh, with, and he'd look at Victor, uh, and ask if his longsword could do the honors. And, uh, challenge this man, this drunkard and man, to a game of the, lane. yeah, whatever he is. And he goes, oh, I love Executioner. I'm game. Somebody get me two tankards. And you can see uh, that he's like riled up and ready to rumble. Um. All right. Uh. And Harry. Um. Take a mo yeah. While uh, while these tankards are getting poured, Harry wants to kind of take a moment to himself and try to cast detect thoughts uh, as secretly as possible. Okay. Make see a sleight of hand. Uh, if there's anything nefarious about this guy. Well, yeah, yeah. Make a sleight of hand. Uh, 19. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry, 21. Do. No, 21. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And cast Detect Thoughts. So I got an 18 on this guy's perception, so he does not realize that you are casting a spell. Uh, you cast yeah. Detect Thoughts. Um, yeah. He's definitely buzzed. Yeah. He's also cocky as all hell. And you hear mm. him thinking, oh, I've won it five times, let's make it six. And, uh, what does Harry know this game to be, um, out of game, out of character? Uh, is this a game of uh, dexterity saving throws? Yeah, this is a game of dexterity, of listening, of perception, to listen for the swing of the blade. Um, so you're listening to make sure that you can hear the blade moving, and then you're pulling your hand away, so it's two things in one. Okay, all right. Okay. Um, and, and the top level thoughts of, of the halfling are that he's somehow very good at this. Um, okay. you, you also know that the game does not end until somebody loses something. Could be the tip of their finger, could be a whole hand. And, uh, b between detect thoughts and me like <laughs> sneaking in the back back to cast a message to give Harry a heads up, can we like get him advantage on this? Give him a little unfair advantage on this game? Totally, if you'd like to. Yeah, let's fucking cheat. <laughs> okay. well, I mean, frankly, I was going to rely on my three lucky charges and hope <laughs> and assume that this dude has three lucky charges as well. 
Uh, just uh, try to beat them. <laughs> well, now now you got kind uh, of what I'm really thinking. Now you got more backup too. You have detect thoughts to like detect when. Well, here's my th the only thing is bring I... the fucking axe down. The only so... thing is, yeah, we don't want to get caught, and that's what I'm wondering is uh is if someone would be able to figure out if you're messaging me. I don't want that to happen. I'll have uh, uh I'll have Volknar and Alistair like cover me and I'll like hide behind them because I'm shorter than both of them. So a table is pulled forward, two benches oh, on boy, each side of the go. table. A piece of chalk is is brought forward from the back of the bar, and they draw a line down the middle. You both are supposed to put your wrists over the line onto the other side of the table. Somebody stands with the sword. They do say it cannot be Victor who swings the sword, considering he's your partner. Um, they hand it to another patron. This, a surly-looking uh, human female, um, and she holds the sword and she says, "It's beautiful. That'll do." And she says, "Back up!" And everyone sort of gives her some space so she can swing the sword over her head. And she says, "Sorry, barman." And she chops down onto the table once. The table does not break. It does chip it. She says, "Oh, this will very much do." cuts well does not dent um and the barman steps forward with three tankards and so the halfling goes you know all the rules eh to you Harry. um yes so <laughs> excellent uh Thank harry you. would ask him if uh if he's feeling lucky um and with it, like, this is part of his, dete uh, assuming this detect thoughts, because this is all happening probably oh, okay. pretty quickly, um, to see if, uh, to get an inkling if he uh, is a lucky man. <laughs> you, don't even need the yeah, you don't even need the detect thoughts for that. He kind of laughs and he goes, oh, they call me Lucky Ned, mate. I'm the luckiest fucking halfling there is. You don't get it, do you? You just, you're going to lose a hand. Uh, he's cocky as hell yeah. um, okay so they put three tankards on each side and say if you pull a hand too soon before the blade is above her head we pull a tankard if you have a tank all three tankards pulled you lose if you lose a hand or a finger or blood is drawn as you retract a hand, you lose. If you both lose hands, you lose and you both owe the house 50 gold. May the best person win. Blindfolds puts them down on the table. Here they are. They will be secured by someone who is not your friend. Everyone else gather round, gather round. Let this bloody game begin. Everyone sort of gathers around. Uh, somebody puts the blindfold on you, Harry. You ready to roll? I'm ready to roll. All right. So you can hear the hush sort of go across the crowd. Go ahead and make your first dexterity. Uh, make your first perception check. <sighs> And then make a dexterity saving throw. And Zeus, if you're going to do anything, you can do it now. Yeah, well, I rolled I on that one, so I'm going to have to burn a lucky charge. Oh, well, maybe I can give you advantage. So wait, wait well, to yeah, burn I was going to say, um, can yeah, um, I would, I would have like messaged him like a countdown, like as I'm watching to tell, to give him like the most perfect time to pull his hand away. Um, give me a deception or sleight of hand or something while you're doing this. Dirty 20. Oh, that's pretty good. And this is the message cantrip, right? Yeah. Double check one thing. So if I have the... So you have to point oh. your finger towards a creature. I, I'll do that while, like, while I'm sneezing. Okay. I got you. Okay. And that's like, good enough. Like, that's more than good enough with your deception. <laughs> yeah. The question about the Warcaster feat. 
It says if I have my hands full, I can still cast spells without like doing the hand motiony parts. If I had a tankard of beer in each hand, would that feat apply in that situation? Uh, it would. Nice. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you are totally good. Go on, Zeus. <clears throat> okay, so what I will say is that you have advantage on your dexterity saving throw. Okay. Are we ready for that? <laughs> yeah, go for it. All right, advantage. Roll. At 20. Nice. There, trucker. Boom. <laughs> okay. And you both pull your hands back, and Harry, you don't see anything, obviously, but you hear a thump of blade upon wood, and the entire crowd go, ooh. Oh, man, that was close for the fucking half leg. That was really tight. He rolled a natural 15. He got a 19. Um, he's fine. Okay, so that was the first one. Let's do the second. Go ahead and roll a perception check. Okay, uh, 18. That's exactly what the halfling rolled. Oh, so he's got, a 20, okay. he's got a 22 total. Go ahead and roll your dexterity check. Can I do the same thing? Roll deception you, to try to give him advantage? Can, if you would like to. 16. Okay. And Harry, you would like to roll a dexterity saving throw? Uh, nat 20. Okay. Um, <laughs> you retract, and the halfling is going to retract his hand too quickly. Um, and then you hear, you hear the barman go, oh, that's one mug down, mate. Sorry there, uh, lucky Ned. Or what did you say? It was Neil? Ned? I don't remember what your name was. You're down a damn tankard. And some of the crowd's like laughing at this point. So he's down one on you. Uh, go ahead and roll again. Uh, perception? Yep. Halfling just got a 21. Ugh, 17. Wow, you guys are rolling identical. You want okay. uh, You want me to try to get you advantage again? I would um, say you, Harry doesn't get a choice. It's up to you, Zeusanu, if you yeah. want to. You've been doing it. So. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just going to keep keep doing do it. it. I, at this point, Ooh, if you do it we'll once. We have 14 this time. Well, I only rolled a three. I don't think anybody saw you. Um, and again, go ahead and roll advantage. Uh, 19. The halfling rolled a nat one. He's going to burn uh. a lucky. Uh, he got a 19 as well. Uh, They're both fine. And you, again, you hear the thump of blade on wood and everyone being like, oh, damn, these guys are good. How are they doing this? You want to keep going? We have to, don't we? You can call out anytime you want. But we'll all make fun of you. <laughs> Absolutely, we will. I oh oh never mind I'm sorry uh, no I mean I, I we're gonna keep going do okay. it I'm nat twenty on perception okay halfling rolled a one uh, uh Zeus who feels like Harry probably has this round so he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna withhold and his utter silence like fills the hall go ahead and roll your dexterity saving throw without advantage right. Without advantage. Uh, Lucky. Goodbye, Harold Tans. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky charge! Oh, it's not any better. <laughs> um, thanks, Zeus. Um, <laughs> you rolled a nat 20. I thought you had this. I know. What is the net? What does the net twenty do for me? Just not, oh, it so, means I just don't pull my hands. So yeah. you hear the blade coming, and actually, yeah. because you hear it coming at the appropriate time, you pull your hand out of it just fine. That being said, the halfling rolled a natural one on his perception check, meaning he misjudged entirely when the blade was coming. He pulled it out far too late. And he only rolled a 15. And because of the natural one on his perception, he needed at least an 18. 
He failed, and he is going to lose. Can somebody roll me a d20, please? Oh, Harry, roll Harry, it. yeah, roll no, it. No, not me. No, someone else roll it. Victor, you're my bodyguard. Oh, okay. 20. Uh, 20. You 20. guys looking so fancy in your fucking new clothes. <laughs> Just chilling. <laughs> Playing this game. Uh, six. Voltar's uh, like, shirtless, hanging out at the bar. He is going to lose the top two knuckles of his three large fingers and the first knuckle of his smallest finger to the sword blade. And you hear, oh! And the entire crowd in the bar goes ape shit over this. And he's like, ah, screaming, and blood is going everywhere across the table. Um, there might be blood on your robes, Harry. Sorry to say. Oh. Press the digitation. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, oh, the game's over? Do I win? Yes, you win. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Harry, uh, Dam- Harry damn near passes out and yeah. takes off his uh, blindfold and uh, has prestidigitation on his fancy new robes and uh, grabs or uh, I don't know. He'd take his gold back because he knew he threw it down, but uh, he'd be uh, looking for his 50 gold to lucky boy over there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, and the, both of the gold bags were on the table. Perfect. And uh, he snatches him up and uh, cheers at victory. Uh, looks around the room to to gauge the uh, the reaction. Oh, oh yeah, a lot of people are like very into this and they are very excited oh. that you won. Because uh, they didn't want to gamble with me earlier, so now they like oh, me. The, they're still not willing to gamble with you, considering how lucky they've just seen you are. <laughs> and yet they are very willing to celebrate your victory. Uh, right. Uh, what would uh, what would Harry estimate a round of drinks for the entire bar to to cost him? Probably twenty gold. Gold. Uh, Harry just buys around for his boys. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, done and done. Victor uh, gets his sword back because it's uh, very fancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but and uh, Harry would um. Also, use prestidigitation on it uh, to wipe off the pinky. Yeah, and all the blood and any uh, any other matter that might be on it. So is this guy like howling yeah. in pain? Uh, he's not, but he's definitely like in serious and obvious pain. As somebody gave him a rag to wrap his hand in. Um, <laughs> he also I, grabbed. I fixed him up. Okay, you would use a healing kit on him. Yeah. Okay. You use one char- charge of a healing kit and you help staunch the bleeding, but he is still missing the ends of some of his fingers on his left hand. Um, and he grumbles as you do this and he grabs somebody else's flag and as they attempt to walk by and downs it. He's like, oh, I'm going home after this. Oh, God, that fucking hurts so much. Oh, th- thank, thank you, mate. I oh, appreciate it much. Oh, no problem. At least, at least you didn't lose all the, the whole finger. He kind of scowls at you. He's like, oh, fuck off. Oh, God, it hurts so bad. He sort of stomps away. Uh, just just tell the women you lost them doing something heroic. It'll be fine. This was... Uh, it, this is supposed to be heroic. He, like, leaves the bar. <laughs> uh, Harry would, uh, so Harry would cheers uh, to Prestige Worldwide. Uh, kind of promote the bar. And the oh, barman's so like in his, in his victory. Hey, and to this bar slightly. too. Uh, that, that's a little better, I guess. But you, you know, <laughs> hey, we're here, aren't we? I would say. Well, I guess that's fair enough. I'm saying you should come by Prestige Worldwide and enjoy an ale on your day off. Well, maybe I'll check it out. A really good cook. The brand new cookbook. <laughs> All right. You guys want to do more here, or do you want to do something elsewhere? What do you guys think? We can always call it, considering we've lost Alistair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know that we already need to, like... Oh, I see he's lighting up. Oh, oh, oh. I'm here. Oh, he's, he's here. Oh, he's here. How did, you, how did you know what just happened, Alistair? Oh, no, I don't. Oh, my God. Oh, man. Harry just had a pretty epic well, No, no, don't even session. tell him. Don't even we'll, uh, tell him. 
No, well, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta watch it. You gotta watch the vlog. We'll watch it live. Uh, okay. It was, but, uh, it was what, uh, as far as shopping goes, what of your shit did you want to upgrade? Like, we, we weren't sure what to get yet. Get to go shopping if you um, want. I mean, just just one item or something. Just my armor, like studded, studded leather. Studded leather. You got you studded leather, and we're thinking of silvering your rapier, unless you wanted a uh, like a plus one weapon. Uh, silvering's fine. Health, go like inside or something. <laughs> I think he's got a fan on him. Oh, yeah, I'm a turn fan. The turn the fan off. Sorry. I fucking head, I'd man. Say, yeah, you got a you got uh, a silvered rapier suffered, and some studded armor. That's yeah, cool. he he sent a link in the chat. If you uh, anything under a thousand gold, you can pick out if you want it. Sure, yeah. Just just the uh, I'm good with studded studded armor and yeah, like we got silvered rapier. Already. That was part of uh what we assumed you wanted. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't need anything fancy. Done and done. Uh, yeah, that was a good uh, night out, but Harry is um done for the night, I think. Although no, he's 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 riding high on the on the adrenaline, I think. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I'm just saying I was stressing out literally. <laughs> oh, like in real life? <laughs> like in real life, I was starting to stress out. I mean, you know, thinking you were gonna lose a hand. We would have, like, got the limb, stitched you up, taken you, like, you know, somewhere. I don't know. I have, I have, uh, I have the mending cantrip. I'd fix I it. was going to, I was halfway wondering if I could um, borrow Alistair's mage hand. <laughs> <laughs> like a fake one. Anyway. Um, yeah, so I don't like, know. What, what do we, we think our wanna, next moves are? Do we want to just, like, uh, want to roll for a 10 day? Like, do, um, we just kind of chill out until something happens, unless something is, you know, going to happen. We totally do that. Him. We get some money from the bar, <laughs> recoup some of the gold we just spent. Yeah, I can spend any extra days working on being able to equip my shield. We can, uh, we can go hunting if anyone wants to get a quick little action rolls in. I know I did, but no one wants to like go hunting or something. Get a quick battle in. <laughs> Find like a group of a uh, group of animals and just cast fifth level fireball. <laughs> I mean, you'd probably ruin the the hide and the. <laughs> what would be the point? Uh, I'll, I'll do I'll be... do uh, fifth level cone of cold instead. That would like freeze it at the same time, keep the meat fresh. What? Hey, is there? A, can we recruit? What about uh, our dragon friend? Oh yeah, yeah, I uh, I would like to go him. visit him at some point. We recruit him for something. He he must. Is he close to um Skullport by, in proximity by any chance? Um, Depth. not. No, uh, I'm, based I'm on not your understanding, most likely not actually. Okay. Either way, I'd I'd like I'd go. Go visit him. Yeah, I let's can, go visit. Yeah. Him. Are where? Oh, wait, where are we right now? Were you down at the seaport gambling? That's our normal mm -hmm. spot, isn't okay. it? No, you would actually be up in the um, uh, it would the not the north ward, but the um, sorry, give me a moment here. It would be the this would be the which ward is this? The C ward, which is the the northwesternmost ward uh, in the city, and it's where the richest folk live. No one would gamble with me, huh? Not until you got to the sea ward. Oh, all right. And that's not where this guy is in the sea ward. He's in the dock ward, which is uh, on the southern okay. side. So okay. if you look at that map, he's like on the literal opposite side of the city. Uh, okay. Hey, do you guys want to go visit uh, our dragon friend? See how he's been doing. Yeah, I have a. Uh, my subclass gives me advantage on charisma rolls against dragons as well. So I can probably uh Doesn't he live underwater? He, he does. does. I so think I mean, last he, time he, it was uh, like a Zeus new thing. We have a, and we have a boating friend. There was like somebody who you guy? who you paid to bring you out yeah. there that was right. Yeah. Um, is he, there, we like is there we made them friends though, so hopefully they're they Oh uh, true. 
Stay just in, in case, is there somewhere like fishing, I could have so. bought a, uh, a potion of like cold resistance on the way over? Uh, at Aurora's Realms, you potentially could have. Um... I've been meaning to get at least one or two of those for a while, depending on how much they are. Cold resist? I don't see a potion of ice vein or anything like that. To be able to um, visit them underwater because it's really cold, so I don't take yeah. the level of, the level of exhaustion. Push in bre water breathing. I, I mean, you can try, right? I guess we. Um, I guess while while I was there, I would have checked to see if they had any. Uh, they they can source it for you. It would be. Uh, let me just double check this. It's going to be at least, I'm going to say at least 200 gold. Per potion? Yes. Oh, damn. I'll just take the level of exhaustion for that much gold. Okay. And so you want to go into the harbor to visit uh, the dragon in particular? Yes. All right. Uh, Harry would try to procure a boat. Uh, you can hire someone to bring you out into the harbor again. Uh, that is not a problem. Or do I have uh, any magic that I can do? Probably not. Could prestidigitation help keep me warm? It says you chill warmer flavor up to one cubic foot of non-living material for an hour. So could I just, like, warm the water around me? As I go, uh, it would only be one cubic foot of water, which is not really enough. Well, c can I just like continuously cast it? Uh, you can, but you can't cast it in such a large enough area that it's not that it like could, the cold water would still affect. Could you. warm an uh, item like like you could hit like rocks and put them in your boots and your gloves. Or, you know what I mean, like hand warmers or something. Oh yeah, like <laughs> could I could I warm up my like robes as I'm swimming? Um, yeah, but you'd only you know be able what? to it's do... Like, it's one point of exhaustion. Just go goddamn do it and take yeah, a rest. Yeah, 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 I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, you are brought out into the... Uh, so first off, however much you... Uh, he, he, he asks that you pay him five gold for this, this um, Orman. All um, right. Because to go out there and for him to wait for you and everything... Um, uh, you know what? No, I want to um, hire uh, a fisherman boat Right to take us out, also to catch us some fish for the uh, prestige worldwide, like double uh, that's, duty. That's actually going to be ten gold, and so it yep. will take two folk okay. to or to row you out and then to fish and everything, and they'll wait and for you. Done. Okay. Um. And going down underwater, uh, Harry, are you going underwater as well? Um. No, Harry's going to tell Zeus to bring him up. If we can talk to him. To bring the dragon up? Okay. I'll, yeah, try to get him to come up and talk to us. Okay. Well, the gang's here to see him. <laughs> um, Zeus and you, you know where to go roughly at this point. So you're able to swim down pretty quickly to where Zelifarn, the young bronze dragon, lives. Um, as you do so, you don't see him anywhere around the shipwreck. What would you like to do? Um, I wanna. I guess I wanna look for him. I guess I'll sw swim around a little bit, see if I can find him. Okay. I guess I'll. Um, does Does message work? Can I like yell out for him? Like point in a direction to see if he's that in that direction. I believe you have to see the creature that you want to message. I just says a creature within range. What's the range? 120 feet. Like, I'm the thinking, like, says, like point walk, your walk finger around. toward a creature within range and whisper a message. Yeah. I mean, you can try. Yeah, like I'm thinking, just like you know, walking around, like yelling out his name, but 
using the message cantrip instead because I'm underwater. Gotcha. I'm just calling out like, hey, like Zelopharn, it's Zeusanu, you around? Gotcha. Um, go ahead and just roll me a d20 for that. That one. Okay. Uh, you spend a solid five minutes doing this. Um, you're cold. You're definitely going to take that point of exhaustion at this point. But it's not awful. And as you are going around doing this, you don't get anything back. There's no reply from Zelfarn. There's no um, movement or uh, nothing out of the ordinary. You see some fish. You see um, some, uh, you know, some crustaceans on the bottom. You don't see the gold dragon. You don't see any other really like gnarly creatures, right? Um, do you go into the shipwreck at all as you do this? Uh, yeah. I'd also I have my uh, in between sending the message cantrip. I'd have like dancing lights out and about to help me see. Okay, and as you you are doing this, and then you begin to descend into the sort of like diagonally um, laden shipwreck on the seafloor, um, you go into the hull, or you go beneath the um, beneath the deck, and you can see like the outline of where you think Zelopharn probably nests. Um, it's back towards the head of the ship. There's the way that like crates and other things have sort of settled. Um, look to be probably an area that is comfortable and safe for him. You do not see him. You see many different crates. You even see one that looks like it has a bunch of gold in it, but it's probably in the area of his nest. Um, is there anything else you would like to do? You can try to go further into the keel of the ship, but it's mostly in the sand and dirt. I guess I'll go a little further in and investigate his lair a little bit more, see what I can see. Okay. Um, going down into the keel, poking your head down, um, you do notice something that is starkly different, and that is that there are dozens of eels down here as you poke your head in at first. Um three feet long, large, thick eels swimming all along the bottom. And it looks like they swim in and out of, like, broken holes in the hull. I don't think I want to mess with a group of eels. Um... I don't think I can leave... I can't, like, leave him any kind of message. I can't, like, write a note underwater. You probably have a, um... Yeah, uh, Harold business card on you that you could leave. Yeah, I, I guess I would do that if I uh, if I had one on me. Hopefully, it's laminated. Okay, sure. If you have that on you, you can do that. Harry made sure he passed them out to everybody. Okay. Um, you leave a business card like in the area where you think he has his like nest. Yeah, and then uh, I'm thinking if I should like cast alarm on the area so I would know when he gets back. But I don't think I want to cast a spell on his nest and mess with him. How long do you want to wait down here for him? Do you have like any time frame um, or no? How how does like how is the exhaustion gonna work? Like how how long until I feel like I'm gonna start like really hurting from it? I mean, it would take quite a long time. We're we're talking hours and hours. Um, I guess I'd wait. I'd wait a couple of hours. I'd I'd message up to Harry above <laughs> me, and uh, tell him that you know, Dragon, he might be out hunting or something. I'm gonna stick around for a little bit. Um, you guys can head back. And I'll I'll meet up with you if I can meet up with the dragon. Okay. Do I get uh, to respond when you send message to me? Uh, I think so. Yeah. And so you're gonna uh, stay down there for hours? <laughs> actually, you cannot <laughs> respond, Harry. I cannot respond. All right, then Harry would just look at whoever else is with me. Did anyone else come with me? Wait, it's it says that he can respond. You can point your finger toward a creature in range. The target hears. Oh, and can whisper, and can reply in a whisper. I'm sorry. You're correct. <laughs> Harry would uh, 
So you're gonna stay down there for hours? That's crazy. Get up here. Like, I don't know. I think gonna, we, you, I, you got like you got one hour while we fish, while I have these guys fish us some food, and then oh, yeah, come you, out you, if you don't. Yeah, see you them. fish. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna stretch yeah. my my water. Just saying. You got one hour. They're actually filling like a bucket of fish for you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. So I guess I'd wait for another hour until I thought the fishing was done. Okay. Uh, yeah. Just roll me a d100. Eight. Uh, no sign of Zelfarn. Sad <laughs> to say. All right, so I guess I I swim back up, get in the boat. Tell him no no dragon today. I'll I'll check back another day see if he's there. I left your Wasn't business card for him though, Harry. No, I mean, was... he's a dragon. Like who knows what they get up to. Smart thinking of you leaving the business card. Um. Yeah, that's. <laughs> He, what do you mean he wasn't there though? I mean, this is his spot. Harry would uh, start looking around, seeing if he could uh, see him uh, breaching the surface or anything. Uh, roll perception check Ar around the lake, around the bay. Uh, yeah, uh, a seven. I mean, it's really uh, picking out a bronze dragon's tail fin or head or something in the way that the the light is sparkling across the bay the water would be really difficult and so you know uh, your hands over your eyes looking across everything you don't think you can see him right, harry would uh, ask the the guys uh if they've seen uh seen a dragon around literally and and the two fishermen kind of look at you and they're like have you you been listening to that old codger again one who won't shut up about seeing a dragon and having the dragon give, help him fish? Yeah, that one. You guys haven't seen it? Ooh. There is no dragon here. But yeah, Zelophon. We've met him before. And I'd I, like, I nudge Alistair and be like, yeah, show, show him what he looks like. With his, uh... <laughs> show him what he looks like. What? what? He's, got, he's got the minor <laughs> illusion cantrip. If you can make a little mini version of him. <laughs> Do you, do you make a do you make a little dragon? Oh uh, man, Alistair's like a droid. I don't think I've seen him. <laughs> oh, no, you were gonna seen him. No, we we all went and visited him the the first time. Uh, we, we got all we got all the water breathing potions. We all went down. We just hung out in the boat. You were the only one that went down. Yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Right, so the we're the crazy people, Zeus. That's all right. Um, <laughs> all right. Elster makes a question mark, a uh, minor illusion. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess, uh, yeah. Yeah, no dragon. Hey, uh, how's the fish? You guys? You guys oh, uh, yeah, he, he, here's a bucket. And there's actually 20 fish in the bucket, like multiple buckets for you. He looks at Zeus he go and asks if he has a uh, fish recipe in his new cookbook. Um, Probably. <laughs> Uh, there was not just a recipe, but there were like several, several different types of fish recipes for you to use. Yeah, so, I got. I'll, 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 I'll do something with them, Harry. Don't you worry about it. We'll come up with something delicious. I right, make it good. I tell the uh, the fishermen to stop by Prestige Worldwide later. Try out the fish. Oh, uh, okay. Sounds good. Uh, is that on the house? Yeah, you catch it. I'll cook it. Oh, okay. Sounds sounds great to us. I actually seem kind of excited at this. <laughs> they they caught our food. They caught our food for us. We'll give them a meal on the house. And maybe just uh, I know it's we're coming up to it, but uh, if um, Harry would try to quickly find if once we got back to shore, uh, find that guy. What was his? You just said his name. Um, fisherman that we enlisted before. Harry would try to see, find him on the docks if gotcha. he was around anywhere. Um, go ahead and make an investigation check for that. Just see if you can rustle him out of his hiding hole. Ooh, 22. Um, you can. Uh, I don't remember this NPC's name off the top of my That's head. That's all right. I just wanted to ask him uh, if he's seen uh, how's uh, Zalathar been, if he's seen him, if he's been uh, with him and stuff. Oh, Z Zelifarn. Uh yeah, I see him every now and then. He um 
I think he pops up looking for me and he, uh, I, you know, he does definitely help me get some fish every day. And he's, he's a nice dragon. He's just a really nice dragon. I mean, we eat a little better and it, everything's really good because of it. Um, I, I haven't been out today. If I do and I see him, do you, do you want me to say something to him? I guess tell him we were looking for him, but I don't really know. Uh, he can't really come looking for us, but uh, yeah, tell him uh, the boys at Prestige were wide or uh, want to check up on him. Uh, we're bummed that uh, he wasn't there. Yeah, we, yeah, we missed him. Oh, okay, I'll uh, I'll let him know if I see him uh, tomorrow when I go out, and you know, I see him most days, but not every day. So I'll, I'll let him know first thing. What was the last? You saw him recently? Like you saw him yesterday or something? Earlier today? He scratches his scraggly little weathered chin. Um, it says, I think it was a day ago, two days ago, two days ago, I think. Uh, yeah, I didn't go out yesterday. Not great weather. I, two days ago. All right. All right yeah, tell him, uh, tell him we were to say what's up. All right. Well, we'll do. We'll do. And if you, you want to go out again, you come find me. And he points over to his, like, sea shanty. Yeah. I will do. Oh, excellent. Uh, but hey, actually, you, if you how if you don't uh, if you don't see him for a few days, let us know down at Prestige Worldwide. Let us know if uh, Prestige Worldwide is where what where's that at? It's, uh, down the old uh, Troll Skull Manor. Ever heard of it? Troll Skull. I don't I don't know a lot of parts of the city that are in the Dock Ward or the Southern Ward. Is that somewhere in the North Ward or Sea Ward or something? It's Castle Ward. Ward. Harry just pulls out a business card for his uh, detective services that has Prestige oh. Worldwide address and just hands it to him. Uh, says, uh, just come by. Uh, and he's like looking at it, stuttering. He's like, I, I'm so sorry. I, ca I can't read. Oh. Sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> The wizard of the bumper. <laughs> all right, well, have a good day, sir. We'll see you around. <laughs> oh, 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 all right. It's good seeing you again. <laughs> all right, man. Yeah. Okay. I hope our dragon sure. friend's okay. Wanted to make sure. Uh, uh, Harry was a little concerned about his dragon friend. <laughs> to make sure he was okay. Okay. Um, let's stop it here for the night. I think that's probably a good spot.